So this is the 2024 Vault 2 release. So this is the second release in the Vault collection with Sizzix. There are five die sets. And of course, the Vault, if you're new to the whole Vault release this year for 2024, that is what I'm doing the entire year, which is bringing back classics, classic dies, uh, reimagined, uh, different scales, uh, often changing technology. We say technology, meaning dies, like sometimes it was a, a Bigs die formerly or decorative strip. So we're able to kind of take those great classic designs that I've developed with Sizzix over the past 15 years and put them into these curated sets. Price point of these sets, of course, are amazing. $20.99 for a die set, uh, which is a great value, especially when we see how much we have uh, packed into these dies. So of course, a shout out to EL. EL is the one that I originally worked with at Sizzix to develop many of these classic designs. Uh, Lisa Jones in the UK, uh, who I worked with in the recent years for uh, some of these that we included here. And of course, uh, Jen, who I worked with uh, and continue to work with at Sizzix in the US, who really uh, helped champion this whole idea. She had to go back in, uh, get those uh, art files and really kind of refine them quite a bit to bring this vault collection to life. So thank you uh, to uh, the team at Sizzix really for supporting this vision. I love uh, this whole release simply because it is very, very functional. You're gonna see there's a lot of great things. Of course, I know everyone is talking about uh, that that picture wheel that's in uh, Picture Show Vault. I love, I love this real die, but we're gonna get into it. I'll take you through each SKU, talk about um, each design, each vault collection. Also talk about scale, because I know that that gets asked a lot when uh, when people see these, especially when they first launched on Monday, because these are available, they launch Monday, available worldwide. But people often say like, is it the same as this? Design-wise, possibly, but more importantly, I think seeing the scale is really, really impactful. So I'll bring in one at a time. We'll talk about Picture Show first. This, of course, is uh, the die set. What I like about this whole set is that it has a lot of elements, okay? Obviously, uh, this picture wheel, that whole, I love, this is so classic Viewmaster, is it not? So I love that design. Then of course, I love the film strip. I love this big film strip negative. And then of course, these tiles, which I'll talk about. Uh, the measurements here I have are really, uh, when I meet with the makers and we talk about all of, the, all of the different things so they can do planning. But I'm gonna just show you more of a comparison of uh, what they are imagined by and how they are uh, different in size and scale. So we'll start with this reel, okay? so. The dies, like I said, many of them were, you know, former classic dies from different technologies. So this first one used to be a Bigs die, this reel. This was the size of the original one. This is the vault one. And not only did we change uh, the actual size of this particular wheel, but also included some really cool features of the die. And that's why I wanted to bring in uh, my die set. So of course, when it was a Bigs steel rule die, when you cut it, you cut it. You get what you get. It, it cut out the, the wheel and all of these little openings. But the difference that we did this time, because like I said, we were able to play uh, with technology, and that's why I think it's important to talk about these during live, is really to show you how we designed it. So the big difference, of course, besides size, is really how this die works. So one piece of the die, if you were just to, to run this through and, and cut it out, is only going to cut out all of these little openings, these little notches, and that center wheel. So you would cut it and it would just stay in the paper, if you will. Then you have this outline and the outline has uh, the same little notches. So you, you kind of just have to spin this to see where it lines up. There we go, is that, no. Uh, yep, right there. And what you would do is if you wanted to cut out the actual wheel like this piece, you would place both of these down at the same time. You could center it, you can tape it, you would run it through. And now it would not only cut out these wheels, but it's got this outer blade. So this piece is your outer blade. Now, why is that so important? Well, it's so important because it does allow you to actually cut out the picture wheel itself. So let me just bring in this little visual so you can see what I'm talking about. By placing these, these two pieces down, you're going to cut out the full wheel because this is your outer blade and this is all of your openings. And you're like, well, why did you do it that way? Why didn't you just do it this way? Because the original version, this is all you got. So you didn't actually have a solid foundation. You just had a bunch of openings. But this way, it not only allows you to cut this piece, but then if you remove this inner and you just cut the outline, 
now you can cut a base piece, a foundation for the wheel. And uh, this is, you'll see in the makes, you know, you can use this as a palette. I know that uh, when the original die came out, Zoe Hillman did a really cool swatch where, you know, she, she actually traced this on and then cut out a solid piece. But now you have a die that matches, even down to little notches where you get all that same detail, where you can just, the outline matches the outline. And now this could be uh, background paper, it could be collage, it could be all of those things, but this still allows you a solid piece and a top piece. So you could even dimensionalize this if you wanted. You could put you know, foam squares under there and, and create some distance. Or you could just have, I guess, just a notchy circle if you wanted. But that's really uh, the great feature from the wheel itself. Then, to make it even better, because I'll, although these pieces are going to to cut out these little windows, if you wanted to plug in things, maybe you had a little index sheet of photos or maybe you had a collage or something that you did and you wanted to <clears throat> pop in photos. So instead of putting your photos back here, you literally wanted to, to take this and almost like a, a mosaic or a tile, pop in little pieces. We also included these little dies, all of these little framelits. So there are six of them of this size. And what this allows you to do is literally take the die and go right over a photo. Again, if you had a contact sheet or something like that, you can place that little die over exactly what you want. You could do six at a time, cut them, and those would be the perfect tiles to pop back into uh, this picture wheel to create uh, a photo collage or whatever it is that you wanted to, to do. So that's what those little tiles are for. Then we're going to get into these, these elements, the, the film strip and that film negative and the other frames. These, of course, were inspired by old classic decorative strip dies. Now, I'm going to be honest, this is just a printout because I don't have decorative strip dies. I didn't keep any of mine. They were my least favorite uh, die technology just because they were they're really challenging uh, to work with, in my opinion, blades, all of that. So I, I decided to pass those on. But these are the scale of the two film strips. One was uh, a large one. They were much longer. They were maybe just about 11 inch long inches long. So we had a large film strip. This is one that I think paired with a ticket. This is the scale of the vault one. So you can see it's significantly smaller, uh, almost like say film strip ribbon from ideology, just a nice small little detail. I love all these little holes that it cuts out as well. Then I wanted to do one big piece, which I don't have as part of the line, but essentially we took one of these uh, art sections and just increased it really big. And here's why we did it. One, I wanted to have just a functional film strip, something small you could use as an embellishment, but also a larger piece. So now when you look at these tiled eyes, this big frame die cuts something to fit inside here. And you might be like, well, hello, I can just use this actual die. You could, but if you wanted to just cut black cardstock and, and place this framelit over a photo to cut out, then you don't have to worry about cutting through this. Case in point, ideology photo booth. Yes, this was sized for ideology photo booth. So if you have any of these photo booth uh, photos, you simply take this framelit, you place it over the photo, you cut it out, and now you have a photo that fits right into uh, this negative. And it just makes it a really an easy way. And of course you could do this with any kind of photos or art collage or anything like that. But that is what that additional die is for, is to pop these in. And that's really where we got the scale of this is because I wanted something for photo booth. I know a lot of people uh, use these photos and you can use them just by cutting them out, but I like the fact that they will pop in here as well. And the fact that they fit in, then it leaves these little notches open when you're putting it onto your make or your card. Then of course, you can imagine that these last four will fit this film strip. And you think, why did you do four? We really just did it to however many we could fit on that template to still keep the price at at $20.99. So you do get four pieces there. Again, you can place these anywhere you want uh, on your art or your collage, and then you'll have little photos that will work in the film strip. And of course, this could be either vertical or horizontal. You'll see from the makes, but there's a lot of ideas that go into one die set. And I think uh, the benefit of allowing me time in the live to explain this is just so you can see it, because sometimes you might just look at the art and go, oh yeah, it's this. But when you're like, oh, wait a minute, you know, it's not just this, I'm actually getting the wheel and a solid. Oh, I'm actually getting this that fits ideology stuff. Oh, these pieces could be used that I could easily cut in. So a lot of great features when it comes to uh, a single skew. We put a lot of thought into this. We really did. I love it. And it's a definite favorite. I can tell you uh, right now how many people uh, were so excited when they saw that this came back. 
and I don't blame you. It is a good one. But even better now that we uh, were able to, to give it some additional features. Okay, moving on. Got a lot of stuff. Woo, here we go. This next one, I, I do love this one. I, I love all of uh, the, the watch gears because we brought back the pocket watch. We brought back gear. There's a lot of stuff that we pulled from to create this vault one. Really fun because it has so many great components and so many different ideas went into this. So this particular one really started out with this piece, the, the pocket watch, if you will. And the pocket watch is cool because you know, you could utilize it as a pocket watch. It can also be kind of like a, an optical lens or a magnifying. This was an old school uh, Biggs movers and shapers. So this was the original die, it was a steel rule die, and it had this bottom piece in. So when you got it, you would just cut that whole solid piece and then you needed a, a separate magnetic mover and shaper die that went in and cut the hole. That's what created that. So here's really the size comparison. This was the big size, huge. And of course, this is the vault. So as you guessed, just from how we did the whole concept with, with the vault picture show, we did the same thing here. So you have this die, which is essentially going to cut that solid. So if you just wanted a solid piece, great. Or if you dropped this piece in at the same time and you cut it, then you're gonna get this outline. Or if you wanted just something to go inside, maybe it's acetate or something like that, then you could just use the circle die itself and you would cut something that actually works as a lens, if you will. So those pieces just on that one watch. But because this die, the Biggs, was just a flat piece, I said to Jen, I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if we just added like little elemental pieces just to build up the dimension of this? So the vault also comes with this additional top piece so you can layer it and this little collar piece. So you can see sometimes you don't really get to, to see the depth of it when you're looking at it on the package but you can see that you have these additional pieces. So technically you could make this a different color than this, right? Maybe you wanted to do this say, out of a silver metallic and you wanted this to be, you know, a darkened silver or brass. You can cut out these pieces in different colors and layer them together or not. So much like uh, the picture wheel, we needed stuff to go inside. And that's where I was like, okay, you know, I'm a huge fan of gears and sadly uh, my gear dies with Sizzix uh, retired very quick. They retire probably quicker than others. So, I said to Jim, like, can I just like have fun and go through and just pick out my favorite things, not necessarily make it easy on you by choosing one die? And she's like, go for it. So I definitely went into some favorites. I went into this one. This is an old school thin lips. This was gearhead. It had a lot of little, uh, little gears, but also some larger ones. And then I went into this steel rule die. This is called mechanical. This had some bigger pieces, but it also had this great, um, this propeller blade and then also this wonderful, I mean, a lot of people use this. This could be a belt, this could be a loop, but just had some great pieces. And so I took inspiration from both of these dies for all of the different gear components inside this one. So let's talk about that. Here's the, here's the inspiration. This is the scale difference between uh, the Biggs. So this was a Biggs L, so you can see how massive these are. And look at how small we made them on the vault really great all of these uh, little elements perfect for a lot of mechanical cards and believe it or not even if you're not into steampunk i always love these mechanical parts and pieces especially uh, when using hearts like for valentine's day because you can just make a uh, mechanical looking heart and i still think you can use uh, bright colors with it so i love that we have just just these elements but then i wanted to get into more uh, detailed pieces and these pieces this just shows you from uh, this one, this gearhead, these were all these great detail. But what we did is we kind of went big and then we went small. And we didn't really have that in-between size. And the vault provided an opportunity to include that in-between size. So if you are a gear lover and you like to cluster things together to kind of make those little mechanical uh, motions, you can now have that in-between size to really fit these gears together better. So this middle size, that is all vault. And then of course for this gear, there's your middle size there. Uh, on that one. So again, a lot of components. Do you have to put them in here? Oh my gosh, no. It was just a way I thought for packaging to display all those gears just to show how, you know, you can use that little belt and uh, that little fan propeller. Just, I love it. And then we have this. Oh, there's my little four. Let's, let's straighten that up. There we go. Some other fun features. This one, oh my gosh, a classic. This is one of my favorite 
fonts, if you will, because it was very weird. Uh, it was called Wordplay. I'm going to bring in this die. This was a Biggs XL back in the day when we were like, how are we going to sell a Biggs die? I think this die was like almost a hundred bucks. It was just crazy. It's a steel rule die that has a full alphabet, but it's all almost like almost like a ransom note. Every letter was a completely different font, completely different size, and same thing with the numbers, totally different font. But what I love about these numbers in particular, especially as you know, I'm a fan of Disney, is it really reminds me of the clock in front of Small World. I just love all the different wonky numbers. So in this instance, this was the scale of that Biggs XL on the wordplay, and these are the numbers in the vault. I mean, significantly smaller. We wanted them to be because it allows you to use these numbers and you're gonna see from the makes, these are great for backgrounds. These are great just to, to jumble up. You don't have to use them with the clock. It was just other elements that we can create, which I think is really a fun component when it comes to the vault. It's just pulling in elements that, that work together in the whole theme or story. We also added these little clock hands. I didn't really have any clock hands uh, much and Jen was like, let's just put those in. So great idea, Jen, just to add those because this other die were for the people that really wanted to make an actual clock. Maybe you wanted to make a timepiece. Maybe you wanted to do something for uh, a birthday or a birth announcement or something where you wanted to recognize a specific time on this timepiece, if you will. So what's in this die set are these little numbers. And you might say, oh, those numbers look awfully familiar. They, they kind of look like, you know, the die set that we've had. I think it was in chapter three. You would be correct. That number set right there, that little font. But what we did is took that number size and made it even smaller. So this is the one that was in chapter three. This is the vault. It's much smaller. We did it smaller because we wanted it to be to scale. But even more so, the additional thought was this one die, if you take a look at it, it has this very weird count of numbers. We did this so you can pass this one die through and you will have all of the numbers to do a clock you will have from one o'clock to 12 o'clock in one pass. So we already counted how many ones you needed, how many twos, how many, so on and so forth, you get it? So that's really the purpose of this. When you cut it out, you're like, boy, that's a random count. Well, that's because if you are gonna make a clock, one pass, one die, and you have all of your numbers to do a clock. See, it's the little things that we think about that you may not even think or know, but in my brain, it matters. It matters to me. So. There's a lot of fun, great things to, to use this. And when you see the makes, and even if you're not into steampunk, just be very open-minded is all I'm saying when you see the makes for this, because you'll fall in love with, with certain components. I assure you, be like, oh my gosh, I love those numbers. Or, oh, I just love how the gears were used. Very cool. Okay, let me get these out of the way. Lot of pieces, so many parts and pieces. I said to Mario, when we were pulling all these dies, he goes, how many dies did you take just to make this one? A lot. It was kind of like real estate. If we ever had time on the uh, space on the, the template, I'm like, we've got time to put another one, Jen. Let's find, give me five minutes. I'll find something. So, all right, let me move this out of the way. Thanks, Mario. All right, take that, put that off the side. Okay, next. Next is a good one. And I saw a lot of questions about this one because uh, of the matchbox. And I, I did a matchbox recently. It was a steel rule die, but people said, is it really different? Let me tell you the true inspiration behind this one and why I wanted to bring it back. Uh, when we did the pillow box in the bag in vault one, I think having a foundational element, a piece that you can embellish was really key, especially if I was going to bring things back from the vault, having foundational dies that you can embellish were important. But also I'm a huge fan of matchboxes as is Paula. Uh, as you know, I work with Paula to do uh, ideology, and this was something that we brought in, and Paula championed these like crazy. These were the ideology matchboxes. If you haven't seen the inspiration, just you can just go to Paula's blog, go to timholtz.com, go to the maker page, find Paula Cini, and go to her blog and just type in matchbox, and you'll see how many amazing dimensional assemblage pieces she does with matchboxes, everything from uh, Christmas projects to every day. But sadly, these are going away. These are being retired probably because of their price point, um, because these matchboxes were, were handmade to a specific size. These sell for $7.99. So it's like eight bucks for one package of matchboxes or $20.99 for a die set. And this die set is the same size as this matchbox. So we knew it was going away and I'm like, I'm just gonna bring that back from the vault and replace this matchbox itself because, well, because it's cool. But, if, but in doing so, wanted to add some 
some little elements, of course. So if you're not familiar with the concept of a matchbox, it's just a little paper matchbox that kind of has a drawer. If you think of it as a drawer versus a matchbox, and this drawer, it has a very uh, tight, what we call like a friction fit in, in the paper craft. We do it to where it really does grab wherever you put it. It's not something loose that'll just slide through. So when you work with it, it is nice because you can, and you'll see if you, if you check out Paula's art, uh, and you'll see from the makes as well, that you can use that to actually create small little vignettes, little shelves, little ledges uh, that work in, in your art. In fact, I think even Emma did like a holiday piece where she had this on the side in one of her makes and she had like bobbles spilling out like Christmas balls. It was very, very cool. So the Matchbox is very, very different when it comes to scale. Let me pull this, I'm just gonna pull this up. This was the Bigs L that I was talking about, the, the Matchbox that I, I formerly had in the line that was a steel wool die. This one is much smaller. So I'll just show you just kind of the cut pieces. This is the matchbox and the band from the steel rule die size. And this is the matchbox and the band from the vault. So you can see it's a much smaller matchbox and also much simpler. You can see that the actual drawer of the bigs die had these tabs that like folded in and covered the bottom. And it was just, it was a lot of paper to deal with. This, we simplified it and just made uh, a very simple, very clean paper drawer. And I'll demo this at the end, like how easy it is to, to assemble this. But in doing so, and because we were going from a steel rule die to a thin die, well, of course, that's where the whole technology play comes in. What else can we do technology wise? Well, we can make it like we did uh, the other dies, giving you the maker options. So this, of course, would be the drawer, the box itself, that little sliding piece made it really easy. The reason we open this area out is just because on a template, it allows us to put another die in there. But then we have this band. This band is, is the piece that wraps around. What's great about this is that when you cut this out, it also cuts and scores. So it's got the, those deep score rules in there. But we included these little shapes so you could cut out windows. That was the whole point of of adding these decorative little elements. Could they be stickers on top? Yes, but it was really to add some decorative windows and I'll explain uh, what that means. That means that when you're going to, to cut this out and you place it down on your, your paper, you can take any of these dies and you can drop it into one of the openings. It really doesn't matter which side if you want, but it will fit in there. You can see that heart just fits perfect in there and you run it through and not only will it cut the band, but it will cut a window out. And that allows you to have all these different window boxes to use. Now, of course, we've done four designs, but the reality is any small dies that you own, be that a Christmas tree, a bat for Halloween, it could be an Easter egg, any die that will fit in there, you can drop that in at the same time and cut out that little window opening. And what's nice about it, of course, is that if you were gonna just put this on a card or a make, you can leave it open. So you can treat it as a little vignette or you can take any type of acetate and you can uh, create that little window so you can do a little candy box, a little shakety shake. Again, we'll get more into that uh, on the demo and I'll talk about that little window, but that's really what the shapes are for. If you don't wanna cut it out as a window, of course you can just cut it out as a shape and stick it on the top, which is why we included a couple of other pieces, which would be the little pointy finger and a weird label. So I'll explain kind of the weird label and the strike plate. There's so much stuff in this die, I love it. Jen and I, we were cracking up because she's like, how many other things are you gonna add? I'm like, is that a challenge or how are we going here? So let's talk about some of the shapes. First off, the heart. So the heart, no surprise, came from that big heartfelt. You know that there was some hearts on the, the vault lovebird. So we wanted to take another heart, it's a different size. So this is the heart that's in the vault. This is the one that's on the steel rule die. So again, it's a different size and that could go as a window, but also as a label. The little shield, well, the little shield was actually this little guy. This was a movers and shapers. This is a little steel rule and it was very, very tiny, cute little shield, but I've always loved this shape. So we took that and we made that one bigger. So sometimes we go smaller, sometimes we go bigger. It just depends on how that really works. Then these shapes, well, we went into to these the whole tiles. I love the idea of uh, these tile shapes because remember it, it gave you five nested shapes of, of multiples. So it allowed you to create all these little uh, mosaic tiles. 
but we went in and took the oval and rectangle, but that's the size in the bolt. So it's right in the middle. So even if you have these nested ones, it's a completely different shape. Could you use a smaller one to do a smaller opening? Absolutely. Couldn't do bigger because bigger wouldn't fit. That's as big as it goes. And that's where we ended up in the middle. And then this one, this was the challenge I gave to Jen. I'm like, please make it happen. You know how much we like pointy fingers. I don't know why that is, but it, I think it might've probably started with Vicky, one of the makers, um, but it's just fun. It's, it's fun to include. Uh, so this one was, was big, but also very detailed. I'm like, I think we need to make this as small as we can make this. And I love the fact that this was the one in, in the chapter three launch and then there's that vault. So a tiny little finger. Could you also do like a little finger cutout? Absolutely. You could use really any die that fits in uh, to cut that out. But I just liked it because maybe you wanted to just put that finger on the side, kind of like, you know, pull to open, something like that. But then we have an interesting rectangle. That's not the window. What is this? Well, I explained that in ideology because we wanted to replace it. These also came with these little top labels, these labels that fit on top of the box. That's what this bigger rectangle was for. That's so you can cut out any type of ephemera, print anything, and you actually have a label that is smaller than the top of your box. So you may not pick that up in the packaging, but that's why that is a different color because this die allows you to cut a label, be that a photo, be that anything, but it just gives a nice label with a, a perfect little framed edge all the way around. And then these little wonky pieces, well, these are kind of like the little, almost like the strike plates on the side of a matchbox. So this is going to cut two little rectangles and deboss those little bumpity bits. So if you add that on the side of your matchbox, just for realism, if you will, uh, it just creates those, those little strike areas. Just something fun, just because, you know, you, you might find a, another clever idea for these pieces that have nothing to do with the matchbox, but I still thought it was a fun little detail to include uh, as a die set. So those are all the, the fun features. You'll see when we demo it, there's also a couple of other tricks up my sleeve, but I do love this die set just because it's functionality. It's great for uh, small gifts. It's great for birthdays. It's great for creating ornaments, believe it or not, around the holidays, but also uh, perfect little elements for collage. And you'll see that in the makes. All right. See, a lot of details, a lot of little details. I'm going to set those off to the side. So I have them when I demo. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this when I demo. Yeah. Let me just set some things aside for now because I'll forget and then need it back. That's always the case, isn't it? Always. Always, sure, always. Thanks. All right, perfect. Thanks, Mario. A lot of stuff. It's like, it's amazing when I just bring in all these dies that we pulled from. Some serious classics. All right. This next one, oh my gosh, the vault. I love this whole travel set because this globe was a favorite, very much a favorite. And I know because uh, when first designed it, I actually designed it as a thinlet in two sizes because it was just such a favorite, like, oh, we need to do it smaller, we need to do it this. Uh, it, it's just such a great shape. But of course, as I've mentioned, with the vault, it gave me the opportunity to reimagine this. Go back and look uh, at all these years ago, how, how did people use this, and how could we make this different and or better? And believe it or not, this one is better. And I'll, I'll show you why, I'll explain. So the whole idea uh, about this, like when you, when you look at the, the die itself, I'm just going to show you, there's a lot of little pieces in there and often the, the art up there kind of represents all the little elements. And you can see, you could barely recognize anything because it's packed with things. Uh, as I mentioned, when I do the vault that there will always be one die in the vault collection that will have an alphabet. I just think that was a great added value, especially because you're getting all of that again for 2099. So the vault world traveler was really about providing some elements that whether you travel or not, you just like the idea of maps or globes, you had some fun pieces to work with. So that's really the globe. But as you can see, this one is dimensional. These are not. This one, dimensional. This one also has a little plane. It's got some arrows. And one of my favorite fonts ever, that really reminds me of like the Disney Studios. It's that Art Deco. So let's talk about uh, scale and really how, how many elements are packed into it. So we'll talk, of course, about, well, the globe itself. These were the first two. As I mentioned, this is the big one. That's the, that first thinlet. And this one was, again, it's just a thinlet. This only came with just a die. Same thing with the smaller one. That was this one. And so I said to Jen, I'm like, 
can we go a little smaller? She's like, you already broke every rule you were supposed to follow on this one. I don't think I can go smaller. I'm like, even if it was just a little bit, that would make it unique. And man, she made it a little smaller, but I think it's really impactful. Even when you just look at the land scale, it's cool. But here's what we did different. It's not gonna surprise you based on seeing what you've already seen on the other dies. Like when we talked about the picture wheel and the watch. But knowing what we know, having the technology that we had, I'm like, hey, let's do the same thing to this die that we did with that picture wheel, which is give you the option of just cutting out the details, cutting out a solid if you wanted to back it with something, or cutting out both pieces. I'll show you what I mean. You could take just this die, place it on your cardstock, and cut this out and you're gonna get all of that great detail but you're not going to cut out the actual piece. This is very cool if you're doing junk journaling, you wanted to make a reveal uh, in, a, in a book or even on a card. If you wanted to do like a shakety shake card, you can leave that in the, the center of your, of your card and then build behind it. So you can you put your acetate in there and do all sorts of, of cool elements because the globe itself could be suspended if you just cut this out. If you just take this frame on one layer, I'm trying to pick this up with my fingers, there we go, you could cut out an opening. So essentially, if you were going to do a card, you could have this, maybe this has, a, again, a piece of acetate, you could have this. You could do so many layers with this globe, even just building up a card, or, of course, you can place both of them down at the same time, run them through, and then actually get a globe. And by doing so, it also allowed us to kind of beef up this outer edge. And I love that it just gives a little bit more of a bold definition to this uh, versus this design. To take it a step further, what I noticed on these original ones is that people, including myself, after you cut it, we're going in with scissors and like snipping out this grid to try to dimensionalize uh, the landmass pieces. And that is what we did with these dies. And believe it or not, this is only two dies. So this piece, and this piece allows you to cut out additional layers and that's how easy this was. So this is one die, this one die. There's that little connection there just to make it easy. So you could cut it, take some, some foam tape and dimensionalize it. Easy, right? So that's going to be these little pieces on here. Before I get ahead of myself, let me put stuff back. Look at me, I'm getting all, want to go through everything. Okay. So that would be the globes. Then we talk about the little arrows in the plane. So this one, this is an old Bigs die. I think this was, yeah, I was going to say artful arrows. So this one had a ton of arrows, but, but quite big. And then we had the plane and the cloud. Also, these were mini movers and shapers, those little magnetic dies. So scale-wise, as you can imagine, is quite different. These were the arrows that were in the Bigs die. That's how tiny we made them for the vault. See the beautiful technology, the fact that we can really reduce that scale and create these pointers. This was just so like if you were going somewhere, if you were coming back, if wish you were here, any of those things, because you could just use that little pointer, point to you know maybe where you live if you happen to be on the globe. The globe, because it's round, you can't show it all. That would be a, a world die, which I, I've done that for Sizzix. I think I did a world one that actually had all all the different land across the world on that. But for a globe, because it's round, we just had to pick that, that portion of it. So don't take offense if, if where you live is not on there. But that was the whole point of, of adding these arrows from a, a travel perspective. Of course, the little airplane in the cloud couldn't be cuter. Look how tiny that is. These were the bigs, those were the tiny ones. So fun, especially from a scale perspective. And then we'll go into the font. So this was, this was old school. You guys remember this one? This is called Deco. Again, it was a Biggs XL. And this was the inspiration. So this isn't the actual font, but this was a font that I really liked so many years ago. And I'm like, oh, I really wanted to do kind of that Art Deco style. So I wanted to find something. So I did a lot of research really to look for that, that clean font. So you can see, uh, believe it or not, that was really how the B is supposed to be on that uh, Biggs die. It was just how the font was. It, the, the top piece was much bigger than the bottom. It always looked a little weird to me, almost upside down. So, you know, when we chose a new font, I wanted uh, probably as close to that Disney studio as possible. You can even see the different nuance in the numbers. But I absolutely love this deco font. It's very, very classic, very clean, very small, which is great. 
approximately five in five eighths inch tall but it's really nice because you can spell out words on cards on projects on journals and you'll see from the makers uh, how they use this font throughout it's really it's a classic so for me it was like okay yes i i love the globe and i love all that but i also just love the font so even if i'm not going to use the globe much it's a great alphabet again for for 20.99 so that one that's a good one I gotta say it's an excellent excellent die so many different components from uh, alphabets to to working with so many different dies to bring up this set it's quite a classic though i think and a lot of little pieces i think knowing that about how you can how you can build these layers oh there's a little die right there there's my two um, how you can build those layers i think is a really great feature especially if you do a lot of uh, journals or kind of creating these little elements i think that's really nice about that okay put this over here let me put this back in look at me i'm actually i'm moving along but i'm trying to be somewhat tidy about all this because usually after a live i just have piles of stuff that i need to make sense of didn't want to do that this time okay then we have our last one of this release which is called boutique and boutique was really all the pretty stuff it was just stuff that again a lot of favorites this doily which there again jen rocked it i didn't think we could ever put this in that was my first go for this idea but then there's also these tiny little butterflies uh, these little uh, decorative scroll elements uh, a deco frame one of my favorite little tattered banners and of course one of those dimensional roses that is actually a three-dimensional rose this is the art right here so you can see from these pieces very pretty but also uh, sophisticated in a sense of how you wanted to use these pieces and you'll see from the makes how many great ideas come from this one die set believe it or not so let's talk about first the doily doily so this die set was inspired by this doily and back in the day when we did this one and i remember doing this with el this was the first time that sizzix had ever put so many cutout pieces on a single thinlet they were like and this was also the inspiration for uh the precision base plate that metal base plate that we had that that's really kind of where it got started because you know you'd have to do multiple passes and turn it and it's like we just need something and so uh kevin at sizzix figured out that precision uh, base plate that we use now the chrome one and that's because this a die like this that was the catalyst for okay we have the ability to do this but we don't have the ability to actually cut out the shape okay so this one because it had all those pieces i'm like we need to shrink it and look at how i can't even believe how small we went but with that there are trade-offs and i, I should have mentioned that also in uh in the the globe anything on the top especially like you'll see at the top of the globe too that where everything kind of comes to a point i'll talk about like this area right here it gives you the illusion that it's cut out but it's really where you know when a blade can't actually get there we instead put in just one like a crease rule like a deboss where it pushes in the paper and that kind of fools the eye so like when you look here on the doily you see all these little these little bumps all the way along see those little embossed dots so those aren't actually cut blade because you can't cut anything out that small uh, but by debossing it, it'll catch the light to give you that illusion that it's cut out. So I didn't mind that compromise at all because the rest of the details to me were spot on with, with the doily that we put into to this vault. So really bravo Jen for, for just working that and for actually getting it, getting it passed. Then we have some other elements, a lot of pieces actually. We'll start with the decorative strips. So this was a decorative strip. It was butterfly frenzy. This is where I had all these different butterflies. So we just uh, chose some different shapes and sizes that I wanted to include in the vault. So the vault has seven of these little butterflies. They're all individual, which are, are perfect, different scales. So you can have things you'll see from the makes perspective of where things kind of fly out. And this was another one. I absolutely loved this die. This was a decorative strip. This was uh, tattered banners. And they're these paper banners that they start out as a strip and you can leave them like that. You can fold them in half if you wanted to do maybe ribbon tails for uh, like a rosette or a prize ribbon, or you can take it and you can just do a little zigzag bend, a little zigzag bend, and you can make that banner. And the great thing about this, not having any crease rule, is you can make that zigzag bend wherever you want to determine the length of however long you need. Maybe it's gonna be for a sentiment, uh, a stamp, a remnant rub. Again, you'll get the ideas from the makes how you can incorporate that die. But one of my favorites, because it just has all those little little chopped out bits very tattered so that also came from 
a decorative strip. So I love having those pieces here. Then we have some other stuff, and this is where we kind of went into a couple of bigs and then one other thinlet. These frames, the deco frames, this was a bigs die that had an oval frame and a rectangular frame. I just like the, the design of it. So we went in and made that smaller for the vault. As you can see here, instead of that bigs frame, it's quite smaller. Great foundation to actually fill with flowers or have butterflies come out if you want. Then we also have this one. This is called scroll. Man, back in the day, these just bring back so many memories because I remember doing this die as well because this is a steel rule die. This was blade. And I remember working with EL. I'm like, can we get blade to like bend in, come back out? I mean, you guys have to think about like this was so many years ago when technology of, of a steel rule die was really circles, squares, you know, the occasional kind of house or tree. But this kind of detail to actually bend steel, an actual blade is it's mind boggling to just go back and see what we were able to achieve. So what we wanted to do is take that beautiful detail and just minimize it to the spec of a thinlet die now. So we've got these beautiful little uh, scroll pieces that are great ornate elements. Absolutely beautiful just to see that. And then we've got this flower, that little swirl. Well, that's from this set. These little, and, and I love these whole little tattered florals just because the idea of this, this one came with a quilling tool where you could cut out these different uh, swirling flowers, roll them up and you could have dimensional uh, elements. But I wanted to, to create something because believe it or not, in this one, this was the biggest size rose that came in this thinlet just because of the template we were working on back in the day. And I'm like, I just want like a bigger rose, a nice one that would make a great embellishment for ideology makes or for cards or for boxes. So the size in the vault is actually larger than any of the flowers on this set. So it just, in my opinion, creates kind of uh, the perfect rose. And you can use it for other things. Again, I'm gonna demo this one, so I'll show you what else we can use it for. But it is a, a bigger flower than what's in this one. And you can see, you know, pretty, pretty good size scale difference. So those are the five. I mean, gosh, so much information on five dies, but as you can see, we packed in a lot of little details that I think in the live, when you hear about them, you're like, oh, that's why. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's that's what I wanted. So those to me are are all important factors that I like to share. I know that opening might be boring to some where they're like, get on with your creativity. But to me, that is creativity. When you can reimagine, when you can reimagine, that's what it's all about. Yeah, Mario's going, yep, yep, yep. Okay. okay. Thanks, Mario. You're welcome. So let's get on to the creativity, shall we? A lot of a lot of creative brilliance. Again, a shout out to the makers. I know uh, during lives, a lot of people ask about makers and makes. And again, if you're, if you're new to watching the lives, if you go to timholtz.com, there is a button on the top that says makers, which should take you to the maker page. And that's where all of the makers that make for these lives are, are there. They have links to their blogs. They have links to Instagram. So you can definitely check them out and, and follow. I'm linking to it for you. Thanks, Mario. Mario's posting a link in there. Many of the makers share their inspiration. They share how they did stuff. Uh, a lot of them will even give some tutorials, some even do video walkthroughs. So it's really you know, important that you support them there as well, because I think it's super Im important just to show them how the, the work they do just matters. Because think about it, they're just getting the die before they see any of this inspiration. And they're like, come up with a, a unique way to use a classic die. And man, they did amazing stuff. So Kathy created this one. This is on just a, a panel. This could be, this is an et cetera uh, panel, just that wonderful hardboard, but you can really work on any kind of foundation. She went in and used a lot of ideology. We did uh, some great transparencies of all these cityscapes. And she said uh, she was inspired just by uh, the history of, of her grandparents. So she wanted to do kind of this great time capsule. I love how she incorporated uh, not only picture show with uh, the film strip and the reel, but also that little that little globe and of course that wonderful font. I told you you're gonna see it, but the tattered details of this, of just because these were printed on vellum, I love how that's tattered. She created this little pocket, but what she also did is used all those little vellum pieces to create these transparent elements, just cutting out different, different aspects because a lot of them were these cityscapes. I had no, no idea that they would be such a great scale. So see, when you hold it up to the light, you have just, isn't that clever? Super great, but you could also do this at home. You could print on vellum. You can run that through your printer and you could print on vellum if you had uh, some small photos. I even love the picture wheel. See how she did uh, New York City. 
1907, but when you go through, it's all of those. Isn't that great? Isn't that cool, Mario? So fun, all these little, look at that. Very, that. very clever. So a, awesome. A clever use for vellum, transparencies, just really smart and, and definitely has meaning to her because, you know, using, using a storyline of, of her grandparents, but just taking art that exists. You know, this is a, a snapshot from, from ideology, but take a look at this little trim detail. I just noticed that. Look at that. Where it's she cut out that little girl. film strip. It's very cool. Makes you want to go? Yeah. I know. Me too. I love that. What a great detail. Just again, taking that little piece and just cutting off the, the areas and use that as a trim. That's clever. I'm totally going to do that. I love that because it, it is a, it's that little that little choppy bit. See, it's the things that you don't notice. And th that's what I was talking about. Look at that. I just noticed a little red arrow where you can point to maybe a vacation spot where you're going. But because you have all of these different pieces, now you understand exactly how this globe was done. Let's break it down. We took the circle die that comes with this. She cut that out. That's the blue layer. Then she took the circle and the globe, cut that out. That's going to be uh, that detailed globe layer. Then she took the land pieces, cut those out and stuck those over the top. And again, this could be cardstock, inked paper, anything. What a great make. So fun. I love, I love the interactiveness of it too. So I think this would be fun really, even from a seasonal make, do like a whole festive thing and little holiday photos or, you know, maybe your favorite Christmas cartoon where you do little snippets of that. Isn't that fun? It's a great make. Great, Kathy. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. I'm going to set that off to the side. I'll try to even bring stuff back in. So Joy made this. Of course, you might recognize some crazy characters. Yeah, always making faces. Uh, this is when some of our many trips to Disney. But I love how she took those little photos and cut those out and put them behind the picture wheel, but also made this a spinner by just layering on uh, the brad so you can actually spin it around. And then did the black and white with that film strip negative photos. I just, I think it's such a clever card where you can take those little photos, shrink them down, uh, print them off your little contact sheets. And I love the idea of black and white photos and then doing color uh, in the wheel. But really, you know me, I'm all about interactive. It doesn't always have to bounce and spring. It just has to, it just has to move Joy where she finally made a card that she liked. Oh, see, yeah, so hard you should be side. happy. This, I love it's this card, ball. but you know, again, it, it's a lot of work. You're cutting out little pieces. So this one, so instead of embedding that, you can always just cut these. So you can easily cut those a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm not sure if this larger frame would fit. I think it's a little too skinny, but it, it really, there you go, the mechanics. Just sticking those behind that wheel. But isn't that fun? Look at all those little details. Some great memories. My gosh, the stuff we do. We are a bit nutty. Those are our duck lips. We're really good at that. I like that. I'm not. And that's just me sticking my head into a shot at a wedding because, well, that's how I roll. I am five years old in my head. All right. So great card. Great way, again, to incorporate photos. I'm just going to leave these here for now and I'll bring okay. them in. So when you're, when you're thinking about using this for photos, Keisha did this one. It's just a great idea for creating a book, right? A little scrapbook. You can use this as actual covers. Take any, any tapes or any way that you want to do a hinge and create a book cover. I love how she, because she loves color, cut out different color cardstock and just tiled that in, use the font to say our trip. And then when you go in, just again, little snippets, whether you have a, a little printer that you take with you that you can actually print. These, of course, that was that die that I talked about fitting into the negative, but you can use it just to cut out little photos. I love the idea of how she did uh, the globe and she put a little heart there, but see then when you open this, because if you wanted to create that hinge, all you need to do is, is place your cutting pad just off of the die so it's not right over the edge and then that won't cut that spot. And that's a, a great way that you can create a hinge out of a, a single piece of paper. But I love how she added photos. And again, when you're making something like this, you can make this, I think this idea was clever, before your trip. If you know you're going somewhere uh, for spring break or for the summer, make this and then maybe you're gonna take your little, your little printer and just add moments in real time. Maybe you need a little creative outlet when you're, when you're out. But I just thought that was really, really sweet. A great way that uh, taking that shape because now not only are you using the wheel itself, but you're using, like I said, just that little notched circle to make foundational pages. And incorporating these elements to me is incredibly clever. A great way to do it. Because this could be used in many ways. And that's what I always love about how the makers interpret uh, the the art itself. So Jen created this. 
So first, before we even get into this beautiful watercolor rainbow palette picture wheel, look at the numbers. Remember I told you that funky number font from uh, the vault, but is it timepiece watch? I don't know what it's called. I think maybe it's called watch gears, watch pieces, something. Somebody will figure it out. Let me look because it's going to drive me crazy now. Let's see. It is called watch gears. There you go. I don't want to keep calling it the wrong thing. Watch gears because I can't call it what it was. So this is that great number font. Look at the background. Isn't that perfect? Where you just cut out all those fun numbers, glue that onto your cardstock and then do all of your inking and painting. That's very, very cool. A clever way to, to use up those, those pieces, especially when you're just looking for that, that right background. It doesn't always have to be an embossing folder. You can simply use your dies, cut them out of white cardstock or black cardstock, layer it, and then do your treatment over the top. But then we've got this fun watercolor palette. So here, Jen cut the background. That's gonna be, because you can see through the notches that it's still white, that's a circle piece. Then she cut out uh, the wheel, but then those little tiles, instead of having those little window openings, she dimensionalized those little tiles. So she was able to either ink those separate, use pencils, layer them. But see, there's so many different ways and that's why it was important on that particular die that not only did we just do the wheel, but provide these little tiles because you will sometimes just want to place them specifically over an area so you can cut out the pieces to use. I just think it's a great card. I love the Hello Friend and then there's a heart from the Matchbox. So a lot of things are scaled to work uh, in different ways. Absolutely love that. Isn't that good? That's so good. So good. Then when it comes to color, sometimes you're just inspired to just make with a variety of colors. And so uh, Juliana created this whole series of colorful palette cards. Isn't that great? Using that, that picture wheel as, well, like as a color palette to inspire the card, but then the actual element is just done in black. So we'll start with this red card, and I love how she used different elements on each card. So here you can just see the background. These backgrounds are ideology backdrops. So that color paper, already done, it's just a backdrop. And then I love how she did that wheel out of uh, script, again, backdrop paper. But then she, she recessed those little color tiles. So instead of having them raised like Jen did, she recessed them. And then she took the little butterflies and that little scroll from Boutique out of black cardstock and then used a couple of those little film strips, just kind of overlay and wonky on the back. And then just using a, an ideology small talk. And that, that's so great just to do from, from a color perspective because you can just sit down and get out your favorite color uh, scrapbook papers or cardstocks or inked backgrounds and just make a whole series. So again, it's the same thing. Backdrops, backdrops, color tiles. Then we have uh, the, the butterfly. This is from uh, Vault 1, just using that. And then the film strips and use your wings. Then we have this one. Again, this is the wildflowers from Vault 1. Ideology in the green. I mean, they're just beautiful. I love these color palettes as well. So uh, it's a great way to use up all your, all your different scraps of paper on the cards and repetition is key. You don't always have to think that every card needs to be this, this breakthrough smash of an idea. You can definitely use these uh, how they are. Again, I love that, that butterfly, you are enough. So making a whole series, now you've got cards just whenever you need them for friends and yeah, I love this purple one because I love all the colors of, of purple and violets and blues. And then of course the Vault Lovebirds in my heart and then the film strip. I just think the film strip is just, I think how she used them, just taking those little pieces and like haphazardly laying them over the top. Just a beautiful card series, is it not? Very, very cool. So think about that and using your papers, but, but it's really, I think the visual of that wheel. Cause see, sometimes people see it and they're like, oh yeah, I, re I remember Viewmaster as a kid. I don't want to put photos in it. it. It's, it can be for photos. You've seen that, but it can also just be a great color wheel. That's really what it is. It, it's a, a great shape and design that allows you to utilize it in different ways. And that's what live is all about, to have you think differently about the actual shape or design that, that you might see. So this one, this is a fun birthday card. Kubert created that one. Look at that great, fun, happy birthday using these, these big, big pieces, those big film strip pieces. I love how she put in, you can use uh, transparencies, you can use uh, leftover packaging, cellophane, acetate, mica, whatever you want. Then pick your favorite alphabet, put that in there. Maybe you wanna use dimensional stickers, maybe you wanna even use shapes. And then I just like how she created a border at a film strip and then uh, did birthday. 
because I told you that deco font's really cool. And I also love how she stacked it. See how she just made a couple layers to just create those thin dimensional letters. It's classic, isn't it? These shapes, that's the whole point of Vault as well, is that they have an appeal that it's not just, oh, I wanna make something today. It's, oh, I love these shapes and I can use them for, for travel, for birthday, for uh, pretty cards, for really whatever it is that you want to create. I love that. Then Barbara made this fun card, you know me and my popcorn brain. When it talks about the movie night, I think popcorn, right there. Uh, and I love how Barbara created this using a lot of fun elements. So here we've got that wheel. That's going to be what I would consider kind of our anchor piece. And then just using those little film pieces, not only to frame the title, but to also use some stamped images. These are the mini blueprints from Stampers Anonymous of the, of the popcorn. That's also Stampers Anonymous, the little ticket stamp. Then she used that little film strip here and then just did that label for movie night. I do love that because you can, you know, you could even save this as a pocket. Don't glue this and, you know, maybe put in a gift card to the movies. But the other little elements like that little pointy finger from the Matchbox, the little, the little gears from Watch Gears really ties into that whole theme of this, the whole projector reel, I think. And of course, uh, the pointy finger for movies. And that's also Stampers Anonymous stamp and stencil in the background. So using your dies, it doesn't always have to be about sticking to the shape. Dies are just a tool. To me, a die is no different than a pair of scissors. It just cuts different, right? Scissors are gonna cut a straight line, a die is gonna cut a weird shape, but you can still use it with your inks, your scrapbook papers, your stickers, your stamps, your stencils, however you see it. Uh, that is what I, I really love about seeing shapes come to life. And shapes coming to life is exactly what Tammy B did. She even said, my makes are a little funky this time, but I had fun and I'm like, hey, Fun is all that matters, and I love the funky fun because I think this is a great piece. A lot of people uh, will be inspired by this. This is her and her husband, Matt. They took a trip. They love Disney as well, so they, they went to Disney World, uh, Animal Kingdom, and I love how she took all the photos from their adventures and made this entire photo montage. So photos at, on the bottom, so that's, of course, the, the picture wheel. That's the base. Then she took some wooden spools, so you can find those anywhere at the craft store, but I like that because it's really almost like a film roll, and then just started connecting those pieces together and adding these little films, and then how she even took the gears, look at that, the gears right there, just as that little film roll as well. I love that, love it, I do. Look at all those. So just having this sit out is really a great keepsake of travel. So this could be a travel adventure. Again, this could be great for a birthday. If you have someone that is celebrating a very special birthday, you take photos, maybe current photos of them, and then like some childhood photos, you do a timeline. If it was wedding, I mean, the whole idea of live, remember, is hopefully you watch these with a pen and paper. That's really what I hope, or a keyboard or something to take notes, because it is important to be inspired in the moment, but also remember those ideas and where you found them. Even if it's like, cool picture project, Tammy B Vault 2. Like, otherwise, how are you gonna find it again? And even though we timestamp the video, sometimes it's really, uh, that idea will just slip if you, if you don't write that down because I think it is important to be inspired by the lives. I love that. So you can see that a die set where you, you start out of it just being, well, being more of that, that picture wheel film strip, which you think, well, that's an, that's an odd, odd vault collaboration, Tim. Like, why would you do that? Because I think that, it can be so many cool things. It can really be something uh, nostalgic where you, you have a keepsake that you want. It could be something where you're, you showcase your friends. It could be about uh, movies, travel, trip, or it could just give you inspiration to uh, create an entire series of cards. I think that that's really what I love about seeing how a die set can inspire so many different ideas when you just look at a shape and go, hmm, what would I ever do with this? Well, all of this, of course. So that's what I'm saying. Makers just blow my mind. They really, really do. So we're going to keep moving on. That was, that was inspiration from one die. One. Yeah. Although there's several others. I mean, you can see where, you know, the globe or the plane or the gears or the finger, that's the idea about vault. And that's also why I wanted to make it affordable because I think making it afford affordable, I saw many people were like, I just got uh, the set and i know a lot of retailers bundle them you know kind of give you a little little deal if you want them all which i think is, is very nice okay 
Next, we're going to get into world travel. We're going to talk about that globe because I just thought they kind of really went well together. And I love seeing uh, cards just created using different ideas with a die shape because that also calls it out. So Rochelle created this. I love the idea, of course, of, of that globe. I like that it's tilted. You can see the benefit of, again, having that solid piece, that circle that matches the top and, of course, the land. But look how she used, this is what I was saying about that font. I wasn't kidding, where I said, even if you're not into the globe, just this font, it is, it is a perfect size. Because look at that, how you can put an entire word. This is die cut through a piece of paper. So you could take uh, that, those letters, place them down, run them through, die cut, place them down, run them through, and then you have that negative space. I just love how Rochelle used that because most of the time when people think of alphabet dies, you cut them and then you glue them down. But remember, because they're individual uh, floating letters, the alphanumeric, you can place them down wherever you want and, and spell a word. You can have the spacing, you can have it curved, you can do whatever. And then of course, adding some wonderful little ideology trinkety bits, a little arrow and the tiny tag, the little hardware heads. I love that. And of course, the sewing detail you can never... I can never sew that close to paper. No way. I would like to. I need, I need a little bit more margin. But maybe there's a trick. Maybe she's sewing and then trimming. I should ask Rochelle. Maybe. Because I can't get there. I, I go off road way too fast. So maybe that's the secret. But I do. I just think that I love the car. But that font, and really, it's, it's, it's Art Deco. It's that whole Great Gatsby. It's the great Disney studio. It's just classic, but such a great style. You know, the the ascender and descender, like, you know, when something is, is higher than the rest, it doesn't have a midline. That's what makes, I think, fonts so unique and just how they pair really well together when you, when you fit that in. Makes you just want to die cut a weight just because of how the W fits in, doesn't it? Makes me, like, I just want to cut that word now. Just because. So Anita made this card because, again, just because a die looks vintage doesn't mean it has to stay vintage. You can really add uh, some fun papers. This is just done out of Metallic, I love the metallic craft stock. I love the message, the whole, you are my world. I love how she used the arrows to point that, the pointy finger on that. And, oh, look at that. I was, I thought that was going to be, I really thought that was one of the, the 3D impresslets. I was going to say that. But no, those are the little strike plates from that matchbox die. Look at that cool little textural border. It almost looks like little leather straps, like, like a suitcase. Maybe that was your intention, Anita. Because to me, it just it reminds me of like a little suitcase what a clever use for those see isn't that a cool border very cool and then oh see I, i'm noticing i don't look at the makes i tell everyone that i look at them when i set them up but i don't like pay attention to them because i like to be surprised but look at how she used that arrow to go through the heart from the matchbox very clever she just cut it so she cut that piece that's just stuck on top cut that really what a fun card i love that you are my world so it could be you are my a lot of things Beautiful. So clever. My gosh. My gosh. My gosh. Keisha did this one. You could tell she's feeling the tropical vibes. Who doesn't want a pink globe? It's like a Barbie world. I love that. I love how she used uh, this, this crackle embossing folder. This was one of my favorites. I know people thought it was weird, but man, when you see it used with the right make, it's such a cool one. I love how it just kind of mimics. It looks like sand on the beach, doesn't it? Those little curves and just the coloration where it just looks like sand on the beach and she's got just these little tropical flowers and then like where she's going to travel to. I think that's beautiful. And then wander, adventure awaits. But having those shapes and being able to color them however you want, see? That's what I'm saying. You can never really look at that and go, oh, the globe, I don't really use that. I don't travel. That's just fun. Even if you're dreaming uh, of a tropical getaway. But I do love the choices that she she used to pull off this theme, especially this background. This background texture, especially when you see it on camera, doesn't look like a sandy beach. It really does. It's so cool. Yeah. Because at first I said to Paul, I'm like, what's the flower? Then she's like, no, it's, it's the whole tropical vibe. And then like, boom, it connected. I do. I love that. And then, yeah, little ideology sticker. Beautiful, Keisha. I love, I love when people just do them. They do their their colors, they do them. And speaking of doing them, we know Natifa is just going to do them. She's like, I'm going to do me, so just go for it. And I, I always love that. I love, I love just seeing how she dreams up things in, in her own style. So we've got congrats on there. Then you open this up and look at this for graduation. How cool is that? How cool is that? So she's got class of, and then she used the numbers from uh, the Watch Gears 2024. And then she did the world is your oyster. 
how cool all those little gears, but just done in metallic, it just gives it such a class, doesn't it? Such a great shine. And then you have, again, that's where this is embedded. So remember when I talked about just using the globe and not the outside? Well, that's just what, that's just what Tifa did. So you can see here that it's connected to the paper and that's allowed her to just put that metallic behind it that she embossed to give it some texture and then added those pieces and I love the little scroll work, but isn't that beautiful? And that's just hand done, I could tell. Beautiful, I can tell I don't have a stamp. That's really pretty. I love the details of that, see? So when you have an idea or a theme that you wanna create, having all the tools to do it, that's just what it's all about. Where you're like, I need a graduation card. Okay, well, think about that. And I, like, how fitting. Really great, see that font, oh my gosh. Very cool, I love the gears. Can you tell? I just keep tipping it to the light. I'm like, it's just so shiny. Yeah, it's like Wonka to me. I just think of like when I see gold gears, it's like, yeah, Wonka candy factory, beautiful. Then of course we can actually use the globe for a word like Joy did. So I was hoping Joy would do something like this. We got, well, first we got a little shakety shake, which you know I love a shakety shake, but I also love the whole outside shakety shake using a, a cello envelope just to put stuff in. Uh, but I love Joy to the World. So again, think of this for Christmas. And if you, if you Google the, I think it was just Sizzix globe die, you'll see a lot of makers using this at Christmas out of metallic, white cardstock. I mean, there's so many times that this die shows up around the holidays simply because it could be Joy to the World and Peace on Earth. So it's also really, really nice. But of course, I love how Joy used Joy to the World. And there's that little, that little banner. So see what I mean? Like you just fold it to whatever size you want that to be. It doesn't matter how long it is, the whole fold is what's going to give it the dimension. So you can fold it, you can have them go straight across, it could be tattered, but I love the color, and of course you know I love a good shakety shake on the inside. Great details, isn't it? Beautiful. Then we get into color, no surprise. Jen created this one, look at that, just peace. And I love the, the mixed media-ness of it. Um, I love, of course, the, the rainbow world of just peace, right? Love and let love. But I love the idea of that metallic. That's a great foundation because it shines really, really well. But also how she used that bigger negative to make just a, a larger film strip border. So you can still piece them together like Jen did. If that film strip is just too small, you can use those. Then of course she used that banner and then did peace. And I love all the splattery color, the mixed media-ness of it all as well. But Great card, beautiful message. I just love it because like I said, the, the globe could actually be a word or part of your make, part of your card. Absolutely, it's phenomenal, I do. I think it's so pretty. Sharon created this. Love how she used uh, the mica stain. So if you haven't used those mica stains since the season, get those out because the color and the shine of those, amazing. But I love how she did the black as that globe, miss you, great card for that, but then also just adding that, that true pop of color and then mimicking the color in the splatters. That's very cool, where it's like masked and she just did like little matching splatter around and that, that's a cool detail. That took some, that took some doing, I will say, just to keep, I mean, how do you control splatter like that? I don't know, but I love it. Cause see, that's also the mica stain, that's the shine in there. Beautiful. So. Great card to send to a friend or family member missing you. Beautiful detail with uh, the difference. And you'll see when they all come together. I love the, the contrast or just the ideas because you know we have makers that make cards and we have makers that just make to make. So uh, Zoe with a Y, Zoe Scarpelli created this. I love how she used uh, the et cetera frame. This of course, you just kind of wind it up and then you let it go and it'll just spin around. You know me, this could be like mobile. I'll just put like a fan on it and it will just spin. But I love how she has that suspended and she's got globe trotter, but then just all that crackle, all that little goodness, but how she just has that suspended globe. So this could hang up. This of course could also go on an easel, but you can make this idea in a card. I love the idea of that spinning and having that plane on there as well. Isn't that a fun make? Just when you see it, I'll stop moving it just so you can see it for a second. But yeah, I love that. This could even be a great idea for the cover of a journal. Maybe you're doing a travel journal where you take some big framed piece that has a circle opening and add that globe to it as well. It's clever. I think it's so cool. Brilliant ideas, always. So Kath created this, talked about travel and travel journal. Of course, the globe, many, many makers think travel. 
How cool is that? Just using that font different ways and busy travel schedule for sure, but just a whole scrapbook on traveling, right? Copy passport, not a real one, just could be the cover of a passport. Any ticket stubs of wherever you travel to, bus tickets, anything like that. But just how she created her own little like memento where it could be luggage tags, all of these elements of, of a great trip and you think, where do I put them? Maybe you don't scrapbook. You don't need to have a, a scrapbook to, to save your memories. You can make any, any make that has memories. Phoenix to London, London to, someone's gonna tell us what that is. Maybe Kath is. Scotland, maybe? I don't know, uh, probably. That's gonna be my guess. I'm sure Kath, I'm sure Kath will say it. Um, but I, I do, I love that it just tells a story because it's travel of like, here's, here's all the places that I'm, that I'm going. And then when you go in, it has all of the elements from you know, where you went, uh, Simon says, Ibiza, I'm, I don't know, Kath will know. Uh, the tickets, the elements there, baggage check, and you can incorporate your stamps, you can incorporate all sorts of different elements when it comes. See, I did say Scotland. I just didn't know it was the Z that, that threw me off. Uh, but I, I think that just adding, see again, papers, these are ideology. I love that paper set, I really did. But telling that story. So think about the theming of it because it could be just general travel like this is, but if you went to an island, if you went to New York City, we talked about uh, Kathy's make, if you, if you do Disney, anything could really be uh, inspired to create a very specific little travel keepsake. Clever, isn't it? Absolutely love. And I told you, you're gonna see that font used so many times because it's, it's really the first time I think that you know, when I do a font, a lot of times, like the word just becomes the make, it becomes almost overpowering, but that skinny little font that's in there, it just allows you to tuck in words everywhere. Cool, isn't it? Love it. And then we have this, this travel Emma make. I, again, I think when it comes to making, it can be something uh, interactive, like a journal, a book, it could be a card, or it could just be a piece of art. So this is an et cetera panel. I love the destination London Calling. Of course, Emma's in the UK, but I think you know creating some pieces, whether this is just an art piece, you can use so many elements. This, Stampers Anonymous stamp down here. This, of course, Stampers Anonymous, et cetera. That's what these are, et cetera, trims. And of course, this is the et cetera panel. But look how she did that beautiful metallic effect on the globe. That's, so that, those are the layers. We've got the background, the globe, and then the land pieces cut and layered on top. Oh, I love the little texture. Look at the clouds. Little embossed texture, a little puffy, puffy fluffy. That's fun. Little stitched elements going around. That's such a clever idea just to sew the paper before you glue it to a board. But then you have, yep, there's a flag back there. Little numbers and then destination. Isn't that great? London calling. Fab. Love that too, where that, that O is just red. So good. Isn't that fun? Because again, a design, the whole idea of designing shapes is to get you, the maker, to dream up what you wanna dream up, to dream up your own stories, to, to look at things and say, yeah, okay, I, I wanna travel, or hey, I just think that, you know, when I think of the globe, I think of graduation, you know, when, you, when the world is your oyster, you just think that you're gonna conquer the world, you do everything, or, or just your dreaming of adventure, or, you already know where you're going or you've gone because you have a, a wonderful uh, place that you, you want to go or that you wanted to send someone a beautiful message. Oh, we got to get London up there. Or we have just some wonderful cards. Peace. I miss you. I know. Just, but, but I think like when you see them, like often when I look at makes like this, especially this, like I look at a shape because we can identify what shape this is, but how everyone's interpretation was completely different. It could be grungy and vintage. It could be colorful. It could be, uh, you know, sophisticated with metallic. I just, I absolutely love that. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your stuff, whether you're getting these dies or whether you haven't looked at what you bought in years, go through your stash and try to reimagine uh, ways. That's what we did with the vault. You could reimagine what you have just the same way we reimagined uh, these shapes. So quite cool. All right. Amazing makes. Hope you guys are as inspired as I am. It's fun to go through them because there's so many great details and they're just getting shapes. That's the, that's the craziest things. Like they're getting a die. It's like, okay, what are you, you going to do with it? Okay. Next up, we're going to, we're going to talk about the, 
the watch gears. And, and this one, I have to say, this one surprised me because, as you know, I, I am a lover of steampunk. But sending it to makers, I know not all of the makers are lovers of steampunk. So I was really curious to see uh, who would resonate with this and what they would do. And I mean, I shouldn't have even wondered because, well, the makers do what they do. They do amazing things. So Barbara created this card. Take a look at that grungy, grimy, wonderful goodness uh, on this card, but also how she incorporated the watch gears with the globe from world travel. See, connecting that, that was very cool. That's why I had to kind of, it was a great segue. I'm like, well, look at that. That's really clever where, yeah, you have that globe, but it's almost like, you know, either looking through a timepiece because she's got time to go. So a whole play on words and then using all of those gears and the plane flying around. So that was a whole other idea. You know, we saw a lot of travel journey, but, but putting that with the watch gears and the whole time to go or time for an adventure or time for a break, whatever it is, you can. But look at those grungy, beautiful details. And I love the color. I love how that teal and yellow just pop up that, that grungy, grimy background. Just really great card, Barbara. It's so fun. So fun how they just take it. Take it and just do their thing. Kath created just fun, playful colors, purple, lime, just, but really do like a mixed media approach to this. It doesn't always have to be steampunk, like I said. Just because you see it doesn't mean it has to be steampunk. It could be very playful and very artful. So I love how she created this card series, just using, using the same color palettes, but kind of different elements. So in here, we've got this, a shakety shake. So look, we got those little sequins in there. There's a little clock hands and we've got time to fly and then she used a little butterflies from boutique kind of flying out of there that wonderful inky mixed media background and then oh yeah I just noticed that because I saw these I saw these little numbers but see how she cut them out of the green but then used the leftover piece inside as part of her background because see the leftover is almost just as as great as the elements that you cut out because you get that great that great negative space then we have this TikTok. Yes. See, like, oh, I just looked at this. This would be great even for summer just to make like a pinwheel. I just saw that when you when you overlay those and you kind of fold them in, this would make a great summer pinwheel. Just give it a little stick. Kind of like that. That's clever. I love those little blades. That these could be flowers, so many different different elements. You'll see a, a great flower idea coming up. But a great way and uh oh, see? It's another thing I noticed. You have to you have to appreciate real time and live because sometimes it just like pops. So here, I'm just guessing this was cut. You see that? And she used this negative piece as a stencil because these are inked. So these numbers right there are inked. So that was just cutting through cardstock and using that to stencil another card. Brilliant. Using the negative piece as a stencil to cut that out. So good. Clever ideas. Two cards packed with a lot of inspiration, especially from a mixed media, because you're like, do I really want this clock? It's still a fun foundation to fill with different pieces, different elements throughout it. Clever, clever. And then of course, you know, we need to have some, of course, steampunk. So I, I know I can count on the steampunk lovers for sure. Uh, Juliana created this one, nice uh, grunge background folder. Look at that great metallic. We've got the gears, we've got the, the little watch hands in there. And don't wait for the perfect moment. Take the moment and make it perfect. So that's ideology. But a great, great card. Love the texture of this too. So anytime you think of elements, think of how you would apply them. What is your palette choice? What, it, what do you really like? Do you like, you know, one of these is like, yeah, steampunk. I know, like me, I resonate with this, but also taking that challenge and saying, no, I still like the shape and I'm going to make it colorful or I'm going to make it whimsical. But Using these pieces, you see what I mean on the gears? You don't have to always make a finished clock, just having these pieces in there. And these, I think these are stuck down. Oh no, they're shakety shakes. Yeah, I was gonna say, you can make it a shaker. And that's just what Juliana did. So these pieces, they just shake around in there. It just probably got stuck from, there you go, from the journey. But see, all that stuff doesn't have to be stuck down. You just, instead of making, uh, using metal gears, you just make your own out of cardstock. That's really great shakety shake. There we go, now it's moving. Very cool card, Juliana, love that. And I say this in many lives, but I'm always so impressed when two makers do something very similar, yet completely different. 
So remember Jen's colorful card with the globe and I mentioned the background and using the numbers. Vicky created this card and used the numbers, but then she also incorporated the plane and the arrows in addition to those numbers and make this journey your own. Look at that. That's ideology right there, that word plaque. But I love how she created this cool background, not only with the numbers, but also with the plane and the arrows. But then she's got this great watch and she's got this, I think this comes loose. Yeah, it does. It just, again, sometimes things get a little stuck in transit and we don't know whether we should just be ripping this off or what we should do. Um, but yeah, so you've got that little chain that hangs over the pocket watch. And I love how she uh, built almost like a, a working, oh, see that got stuck. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> a working timepiece in there where she and I just her detail and finishes of how she layered all these pieces but that was the point of putting these gears when Jen and I were working on that we also wanted to make sure that if you wanted to use the gears inside this pocket watch that they would all be to scale where you could stack them and layer them and build them and again that see you could see that that little that little blade is so cool that little propeller and just that belt also cool you can add any of your your hardware, your findings, but yeah, what a great card. Simple, cool, like this could just be a framed art piece. Really, I'm even envisioning like lights in there and the imagination goes. Imagination is always about that. So uh, Luisa created this, talk about imagination. Look at, th this is like just grunge magnificence. And of course, very important, just one life, very important uh, mantra for me. I think that, you know, when you think about time, I think that every minute matters and you really need to make the most of it and never put off like, oh, I'll do this tomorrow, I'll do this. Whatever you feel like doing, you need to do it. And I love how it's like, it's almost like just deconstructed or that time is just, it's kind of breaking away and you have just one life just to, to fly and do your thing. I don't even know if she means any of this, but this is what I see uh, when I take a look at it. But look at all the, the grunge and beauty. So it's like she made the clock, but just as time is just breaking away, just chipping away at that that piece this looks like i'm trying to see this looks like that doesn't it i think so i think that is this piece from the die to really create a fragment that's what i think and that looks like the negative part of that so it's almost like creating your own fragment i don't know if she did or if it's just my eyes fooling me but doesn't it look like that it's got to be what a great use for a fragment because it is just like eroding or chipping away if you don't want to create that that that's very clever really cool i love the gears in here again see the ability to layer those pieces to create the depth you've got those clock hands take a little ideology a little butterfly and some moss just beautiful and this of course this is in stampers anonymous etc tag as foundation just it's gorgeous great great detail and great ideas of of creating that so having that whole fracture of time you're going to see there's a lot of a lot of clever uses for this die. I know sometimes, you know, I, I said that even when I was introducing this, a lot of people are like, mm, gear, steampunk, denied. Well, I don't know. Have an open mind because you never know if you let your creativity expand a little bit. That's how we grow as makers by trying things that maybe at first you don't think is your jam. And then you see it and you're like, well, that is clever like this. Kathy created this. So here doesn't really matter that you want to create a watch or a clock or anything. You've got parts, you've got pieces, you have shapes, and you can make something uh, magnificent like flowers. So Kathy created all of these flowers using the gear pieces, whether it's using the gear, this is the inside of that belt, you know, that makes these little loops that, remember that skinny belt? There's the belt pieces right here. And then those are the solid pieces right there. And I love how she just made flowers in a frame, took a little corrugated cardboard, did some embossing, a little grungy, but then also did flowers. And if metallic is not your thing, you can still make these out of any color that you want. But I think the idea of, of a gear flower, whether it was dimensional, or whether you put it onto to a frame is a very clever use for these dies. These right here, of course, are the little, the little clock hands and then how she layered the gears for the center of the flowers and those little propellers out. Isn't that great? Absolutely, it's just so cool. And I love how she did like the abandoned back here. I think that's really cool, the abandoned paper and then just corrugate board and then that's just some stamping back there cool right very clever 
very, very clever when it comes to uh, to creating this. Somebody goes, I see a skull. I see it now too, now that you said it. And I don't, I don't think that's her intention, but I see it now. You can't unsee it. Eyes, nose, mouth. Very cool. Very cool. Kathy's like, there you go. That, I'll send that for Halloween. So next, I'm going to just bring in this. It's again, really beautiful when makers surprise you. Zoe with a Y, surprising with this. It's so pretty. It, it's just, not that she doesn't make pretty things, but it's just really, uh, I love how it's still very much her style with the collage in the back where she does, you know, the, the tissue and she's got some stenciling, but just the, the vintage grunginess of this card because we still have that, that great watch gear. We have Be Brave, but how it's just kind of fractured by using mica tiles like the broken glass. And then of course you have photo booth. Then she's got the roses from boutique. We also have that little doily. So it's in, and then of course those scrolls. So it's incorporating some, some pretty components in with that pocket watch piece. And I think that the pocket watch piece really isn't so much steampunk for this one. It's just a beautiful frame. It can almost be a locket. Do you see what I mean? When I, when I talked about this shape, yes, it is because I put gears in here for packaging. But when you look at that shape, it can simply be a locket or a magnifying glass or a pocket watch. But I think using it with a, a keepsake in mind, especially with Be Brave, for like to send to a friend, need support, whatever, is just a great use of that shape. That's really what it's all about. It's really pretty. So when I saw that, I'm like, it's just such a pretty idea just to use it as a frame. You know, not worry about the gears and all. So Kathy created this one too. So, you know, obviously I think when she was creating, she was maybe thinking steampunk, but She's like, I don't really want to go that way. She went a completely different way and used a lot of elements on this. So this one, she just uh, used a, a frame. This could be something, it's just like a store-bought picture frame as your foundation and then built this beautiful art piece on top of it. So we've got all these wonderful layers. We've got the little scroll work. There's that little tattered banner. She stamped that. So if you have a small little alphabet set, you can stamp that. Then she used the matchbox just to create just using the drawer of the matchbox. So instead of the wrap, she just used that. So you can, I don't know, can you see in there? There it is. And then she used the little frame, that little frame that uh, is from Boutique to fit over the top of it. So it is to scale where you could add that little frame over the top. Then she did those roses, see what I mean? Aren't those beautiful? So good, those paper roses from Boutique. But then the back, of course, is that timepiece. So she even went in and did the detail by adding the numbers because details matter. So even if you're gonna cover it up, having some of the reveal is really good because this is just it's titled Love Story. So this is their whole love story. But she, she sent me a little note, a little detail uh, what's in there because besides all the layers of ephemera in here, she used the doily to kind of wrap this up and then put in a little love note. So if you were making this again for a significant other, you can use that doily. I love how she folded that up just to make a little pocket where you can put in, you know, just maybe a little love note that you shared or just something significant. I think it, it's really uh, heartfelt when you take these pieces and put them together to capture uh, a very significant feeling, emotion, or time. There's a lot of, I think clocks are powerful. I mean, you could tell. I talk about the clock collection I have in the studio, which is a lot, right, Mario? A, lot a, little, a little many, right? Now, this make, this one just kind of blew my mind. This is a working clock, okay? I'll have you take a look at that. You see this? Anita created this. So this one, this is, and I saw somebody I think ask at the very beginning about asking if the Sizzix domes fit this. Yes, this is one of the Sizzix domes, that larger dome that fit the opening of this. But I love how Anita took a, a clock mechanism, that's what this is, and then made a working clock. So this is the die, this is the die where she just used a solid piece, a little ideology hinge, but then used all the gears, the little uh, propeller, and then also inside here used, looks like those little frames of the picture wheel in there to add those, those numbers. And I love how they're all shiny in there. But yeah, a working clock. And then just use a little swivel clasp to stand it up. So this just sits, so it sits like that. But how clever, so much so much time, pun intended, that went into this. But, but, but really, I think it's, it's very cool because if you see that and you're literally like, you know what, I'm gonna make a clock out of that. The fact that everything goes to scale, which I mentioned why we did those numbers in there, why we wanted to put all those pieces in there, uh, to utilize that I think is very, very cool. What a clever make, right?
so it's like boom are you kidding me i think that's really really good and i think having that that little wheel in there that's what creates that open space for all of them it's good all right got one more then i'll bring them all in because i also it's it's fun because i like reading the comments where someone's like oh it reminds me of alice in wonderland well that's what emma thought as well so emma did uh, the whole rabbit from alice in wonderland and created a story with that as well so when we talk about a whimsical vibe where you've seen a lot of uh you know steampunk this this is all just using these are the etc panels these right here that i think this is one of the facades i think here and then we've got the trims but then we've got this guy we know from bought one i love how uh, she took the bunny and did a little mr rabbit but i also love the roses that she did from the new vault boutique i told you it's the perfect size that these are all paper it's just fabulous and then we've got the little toadstool from ideology and then how she used that that playful number font with the numbers that come with it so when, when people look and they're like so why did you do this and then this well because my imagination went literal clock and playful numbers in time like i said like a small world and i think it's really cool here there's a little key there that hangs down it's really cool that you allow your imagination to take a shape and do with it what you dream. And I love how Emma did that, just creating a whole story. That's what it's all about. It's just using, using the dies and inspiration for just that, for creating uh, just great detail, great elements, right? So many cool things. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit all this stuff in. It's, it's a good one. It, it's so amazing how people just created some, this one was a little tricky even when I photographed it. I think I'm gonna, it's my little prop. I'm gonna use it. Oh, well, you know, I, I just use blocks here and there and then I waste, I balance stuff on that. There we go. There go. That works. You never really know with me. And then I'll normally add something and then that'll knock it all down. So that's just how that works here. Let's do this like this. Ooh, that slid in perfect. See, it's half the fun. If you, if you guys have seen these eyes before, you know, it. when I, when I bring out a lot of makes, I always like to try to fit them in frame afterwards. That's always fun to do. Not bad. We'll bring them on to cast clocks. There we go. Look at that. Cool ideas. Beautiful mix. Cool ideas using that die. Like, who knew that it could be everything from, you know, grunge to, to pretty to mixed media fun to, to literal things or to, of course, Wonderland. That's the significance of Vault. That is, in my opinion, why these classic designs needed to come back. Because as fun as it is to have all the new, and we have years and years of new, it's also great for people that, well, one, maybe you didn't get it, or two, maybe you had it, but as you can see, the size, scale, and technology is, it was just big because we were doing steel dies, so everything had to be a much bigger scale back then in order to cut that. So that, to me, is, I think, super important. All right, so now we're going to get into uh, Boutique next, and then we'll get into Matchbox. And Boutique was really pretty. I mean, to be expected, I think it is about having some some cute things with this and that's what the whole set of boutique was about it it had all these tiny little elements little things that maybe didn't matter or or kind of work together but you could you can use them together but you can also use them apart so we'll start with this tiny little card uh, that tammy v made i think it's really charming just when you see these little elements and how they work together so there we have that little frame a little bit of doily in the back we've got the little great scroll pieces that she put in there the little rose, I like how she put a pearl in there. That's pretty. And then there is that banner with Hello Friend. So there's a stamp set that is like, I never really know what they're called. Like they're little tiny sentiments, but I did an everyday set, a Halloween and a Christmas set. But those fit if you wanted to stamp on this banner. That's what many of them use. So I think that that's really, really good. But as I mentioned with this banner, you just fold it to fit whatever sentiment uh, you want to put on there. So cute little card. That Tammy did, but I'll bring in the other make that Tammy did because it's also pretty. And she's like, again, I don't know why she apologized for being, cause she's like, I don't know if she really apologized. Maybe she was more of a warning, but she's like, totally not my style, but I had fun with dyes. Same way she did that really great dimensional piece um, with the picture wheel and the film strip. I love that she was inspired. She said she saw this on, on Pinterest and wanted to make something like that. It's an old bed spring. That's what this is. But I love how she just made something really pretty out of that. She did a little bird nest taking some papier mache eggs and covering with the scroll. There's the lovebird from vault one. 
I love the, how she used the frames just to create a background. So it gave like a foundation. And then she has, there's beauty and simplicity. So uh, again, you can use a stamp, remnant rub, you can write it on there. And then she did all the little flowers and then just used like just a little bit of, it's like shred, it's like Excelsior, but it's like little wood shred in there. And then even at the bottom, she has another bird, another frame and a flower, but it's a, it's a beautiful piece. So this could, this is great for spring that it can sit on a table or a ledge or anything, but yeah, isn't that clever? So really, but there again, when you have all the stuff out and you're making stuff, you're like, oh, I've got these leftover pieces. I'll make a card. Or maybe you started with the card and you're like, oh, I've got this idea and you just do it. You follow your whole inspiration uh, to create whatever elements you, you want from this. And that's, that's what Boutique is. It's, it is pretty. It's a pretty die set, I think. All right. Kubert created this beautiful card. I love, of course, the soft grungy colors in the background with splatter because you know who said grungy can't be beautiful grunge is beautiful remember that but i love the stitching the random stitching the string there's that doily that's why we wanted to do that because as i mentioned the other doily was so much so much larger and you know back then when we brought it out most makers were using part of it because it you know it, it became the card and so i like having this this much smaller one that you can use there are those flowers i told you the shape is perfect there's the little banner and you can even use that. I like, this is a great idea. Let's see, I just realized that's on a stamp. So that is using an ideology uh, sticker. So you can use your small talk just to put on there. Huh, who knew that fit that? I'll say I did it by design, but I didn't. But that's, who knew, that's great. And I love the little butterflies flying out. That's why we did those. So when you see them and you cut them out and you're like, these are so tiny. Well, that's why, because we wanted to create that perspective. So as a maker, you didn't have to think about it. You could just cut them out because they're individual and then you can put them however you wish. But beautiful card, Kubert. I love that. Really, really pretty. So pretty. Another pretty Zoe with a Y. Zoe, like the flowers, I'm telling you. But see in like this grunge way, like I see that and like right away I'm like, okay, that's Zoe Scarpelli. You can just tell. But I love that, that embossed background, the embossed resist with that you know, little paint, little oxide, kind of rub that off, but then see how that doily is just grunge. But I like that it, it almost created kind of like the wrap around the bouquet where she has a doily here. And then she used another one where she just folded it up a little bit of fabric there, but isn't this bouquet just, it's beautiful. It's not, it's so great. You'll see when we talk about roses, because there's a lot of ways I'm going to show you like the quick, simple way, but I want you to remember this, uh, this make in particular, just so I can explain what I'm going to tell you, which is a rose could have an any, right? Where you can create it where that goes down and the petals come up, or it can have an Audi where the center is more up and the petals come back. So just keep that in mind when you're building these and why we love uh, this particular rose die is that you can create all different types of these roses and sizes. And of course the leaves, those are also included. You may not uh, have noticed that on the die, but they're right there. There's two leaves uh, that go with it. And then of course I like the scrolls and then keep looking where the light shines bright. Pretty. So you can do pretty with grunge. Yes, for sure. I do love that. Any guesses who this is? Yes, Natifa. So first of all, I just wanted to acknowledge the effort that I know went in to just this envelope. We haven't even opened it yet. But one thing about cutting this and when Mario sees he'll know, when you cut this out, it cuts great. I do recommend, even with a precision base plate, you know, definitely you, you need a chrome precision base plate if you're going to have good success with this, in my opinion. Um, but two passes never hurts, but it's cleaning this out that takes some love because even if it cuts it clean, it's still a lot of, a lot of pokey outy on the paper, even if you have a die brush, um, as well as the die. So doing that every time, like, but it's cool. That's the thing. You appreciate it when you see it you're like i did that that's beautiful you just kind of sit back and just go for it you can place that down i mean a, a die brush really is your friend on this one because it gets really it gets a lot of the stuff it gets a lot of stuff out so yeah i think that's great but let's open this up oh cool it's one of her portraits if you don't follow uh juicy christians on instagram like she's been doing these portraits for a while now and each one is so unique and that's so cool that we have one for live fabulous using uh, the ideology paper doll portraits and layers 
but just how she embellishes them, absolutely fabulous. So this one has that, a doily in the back. So it makes just a, a beautiful halo behind. I love seeing all the little scrolls cut out of metallic for the background. There's more of that doily. There's a little banner. I love where it says legendary. And then just all these pearls. It's, they're just so fun. And I just think they're cool. They're like, to me, they're over the top cool portraits. I love that. It's art in and of itself. But I, I've been watching the series and I love how she just does the portrait. So I'm so happy she made one for live. Isn't that cool? I mean, look at that detail with the pearls. Just so fun. Yeah, it's fabulous. And so, I mean, you could see legendary belongs in a very legendary envelope. Correct? So Tifa, that's just, that's fab. Absolutely fabulous. <laughs> so good. So amazing. Legendary indeed. All right. That's beautiful. Like that. Wow. That's commitment. That's beautiful. That's so good. All right. So uses for this, I think what's really important to, to remember when it comes to these shapes is that, you know, as I said at the very beginning, when I do a, a vault set, I, I pack things that I think go together, but that also fill the template. But that doesn't mean you have to use everything together. You can pick an element that is going to work for your make. So when Rochelle did this card, I love this card that Rochelle did where the the doily just becomes the background. Again, cutting a white cardstock, putting that on, having it go off the edge so you can cut that and use another piece over here and just kind of fill in. But then using the heart from the matchbox die and just creating that, that dimensional tile. So this could be a Valentine card, anniversary card, a just because card, but also how you can make either a paper embellishment like that little rose from Boutique and also pair it with ideology. So Keep that in mind when you're thinking about it. I know that Valentine's Day has passed, but if you're thinking about like, oh, great, you know, maybe you struggled when Valentine's Day that all you had were hearts. You didn't have any other thing to go with it. Well, that's what's great about this die. You're going to have a doily. You're going to have a, a rose, just some elements that you can use all the time. It's a sweet card, isn't it? Very sweet. You can even do that with the chocolate. All right. Then we'll talk about this little make that Debbie Adams made sitting in the palm of my hand. Um, so we're gonna get into the matchbox next, but this used a lot of boutique, so I wanted to put in this one. So Debbie Adams actually cut the matchbox out of transparency to make a translucent or transparent matchbox. She said she was going for like old school, you know, gilded metallic, It's and she did it, I think. I love how she did the little metallic beads at the bottom. So she used the, the scroll out of metallic. There's the frame out of metallic, there's the rose out of metallic. And you know, the heavier the cardstock, it's it's a little challenging to make that that flower if you have thick cardstock. So I think she did an amazing job. And then of course, that, that diamond in there. But a beautiful little keepsake box. But this is like, she included a note, which I do read notes from makers because I never know. And I would have 100% missed this. But she's like, oh, I put a little pearl thing. I'm like, well, of course you did. It's a little jewelry box. She's like, but take a look at the actual little bracelet. And I'm like, okay, you ready? So let me just take this little bracelet out. This little bracelet, if you look closely, she made a charm using the butterfly. So she took the tiny butterfly and then just used, so I thought this was a type charm, but it isn't, but you can find these little metal blanks that, that have either epoxy over the top or you can use glossy accents, but she used a little butterfly die to make this little charm for the charm bracelet and then just created this charm bracelet to put in the box. I know, right? Wow, like the box was already wow and I got the old pearls, but then this, I was like, okay, using those butterflies for little charms, would have never thought that, but yes, they fit perfectly. And I don't know how she folded acetate to make a box. I could barely do it with cardstock, but you can, clearly. Charming, isn't it? So good. So good. All right. So these other two makes with Boutique, I wanted to talk about like the importance of the butterflies because the butterflies, as I mentioned, uh, are were really an important part of this die set just because of the scale. I've done a lot of butterfly dies. Most of them are pretty big because they were statement pieces. And I did love that butterfly frenzy uh, decorative strip just because you got a lot of almost confetti butterflies. So Kubera created this card and I just, I love it. I love how uh, you just have black background because it makes these colors pop and how she just took inky paper and then you just get to lay these out because remember these are all these butterflies 
Uh, where's my set? Let's see. There we go. A magnet. They're all individual. So you can take those butterflies and you can just stick them down, run them through a color, stick them down, run them through a color. And that really allows you to have all these different sizes and shapes of butterflies and just cut them out of color. And I love how she just has them just flying right off the card. I really like how these couple just go off the edge of the card. That be just beautiful. So fun. So this could be something that you stick down on a card or if you have paper, and I recommend if you're going to do the confetti idea, make sure it's color on both sides in case they flip around, but great little shakety shake elements where you can cover that. I just think it's, it's really, really incredible. And that's just utilizing that, that section. So $20.99, you're getting so many different things. That's the part that I, I just want to remind people of that you can take an idea and go with it. Like Sharon did. She did a butterfly out of butterflies. And that it actually gave me goosies when I just said, look at that, because I just found that to be brilliant. So she took the butterfly from vault one. That's the foundation. See the antenna back there? And then she filled it because that does that butterfly from vault one also has the, the solid and then filled it with all those other little butterflies and then did with brave wings. She flies using the little banner. I mean, that's just, that's remarkable. And look at all the dimension in there. That's just sitting down and gluing and stacking and little foam squares, little glue. I just think that's really, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing. Such an amazing idea. Like I would have never thought of that. I mean, I think all the ideas are brilliant, but sometimes I just see one and I'm like, what? Like, I, I don't know. It's magical, especially the dimension. So beautiful card, Sharon. Really, I, it just, it gave me chills because I thought like, how, how fabulous is that? And then like the splash of color and you wouldn't really, I think what's amazing is you wouldn't really necessarily focus on those little butterflies. Though, and because quite honestly, those little butterflies were, you know, they were accents when we did the die set. We're like, oh, let's, you know, what else is pretty? Oh, doilies, roses, oh, little butterflies. But to see a maker actually just, well, makers, I mean, both of them just said, you know what? I'm just going to do the butterflies. That's where I'm going with this. I think that's, that's very cool. All right, let's put Tammy's little spring there. Oh, I thought it was going to roll everywhere. Didn't, not too bad. Beautiful, beautiful stuff, is it not? There we go. I didn't have to go so tight on these. These are prettier. Look at that. Oh, let's bring that in. Look at that. We'll even pop open the drawer. Isn't that great? It's just so fun to, to really see how, you know, you take a look at that and you think what could be done with that because it is like, especially on boutique. All the different stuff. Yeah. yeah. Really, it's beautiful. It's so fun. So inspiring. All right. We got another die set to go through more inspiration and then do a little demo. We'll talk about the matchbox and a uh, quick demo on the rose. But let's get into the matchbox because sometimes I think that, you know, when you see a shape set, it, there's not much you can do with it. And that's really on me. I've always, when I, ever since I've designed for Sizzix, you know, uh, a lot of times for packaging, Sizzix will do like an embellished card or what, you know, what they call an embellished image. And even from day one, I never wanted my packaging to be that because I'm like, if I decorate this like a birthday box, then that's all you see is a birthday box. I just want to kind of keep it like foundational. But at the same time, sometimes my packaging isn't, isn't very inspiring because you see it and you're like, wah, wah, what is that? Like, maybe you don't even know that's a matchbox, right? So seeing the, the inspiration and connecting the dots is very, very important and impactful. So we'll start with that. We're going to start with this make that, that Stacy did. I love, this is an et cetera tag covered in backdrops, but very shabby, very pretty, and very much mixing a lot of other components. So the background, she did some stamping and watercolor, which is beautiful. You can see uh, there's all types of, of different lace on here and some ribbons and some threads, but there's still a lot of layers. Like if you look back here, there's a little remnant of uh, the deco frame. There's a little, little button right there. And then she used the matchbox just as a photo shadow box. That's what I was saying. You can cut it out of any kind of paper you want. You can do stamping. This is already embossed. So using an embossing folder, if you want to have texture, there's that little shield because I said that shield was, it's just charming. That little shield is so great. Oh, I love that little butterfly with the little button. 
Very cute. That's ideology back there, a little curator snippet. But see how she just like slid that out and used it for a photo. So this could be a great thing. It could be any theme. It could be this, it could be pretty, or it could be vintage, like a vintage photo. This could have a beach theme and it's on vacation. I mean, it's, it's anywhere you want to take the idea, but that's the important thing of if you're a note taker, which I said earlier is good, you jot that down. You're like matchbox, photo, collage, tag, you know, and because you could take this and really theme it, but I think it's so pretty how she incorporated stamps and stencils and ribbons and trims and all the shabby wonderfulness that, that Stacy likes to do. It's totally her. But see that shield, that little butterfly? So good. And then she goes here, which I think is like, okay. She, she's like, yeah, I'm shabby and pretty, but, but here, hold my grunge because she is also a huge lover of grunge and distress. And I love how she just took that inspiration. It's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little shabby. I'm going to do a little steampunk grunge, but using the matchbox in a totally different way. I think Stacy's just brilliant. I probably am going to miss a million little details. I love that piece of denim twisted around. I love that there's a tag wrapped around this. So see, it's a tag and leave the tag on there. What do you do with tag? Why, why not keep that? I love the, the paper here, the photo, the little pointy finger, like 1907, the little, the workman. Now this could be a backdrop. It could be snapshots. It could be whatever photo you have. Then the mica tiles that just kind of go over the top, but then how this is slid out, but take a look. It's like she made all little blueprints and plans and all that just rolled up coming out of here. So it's just kind of like, you know, they're on a job site and here's all the plans and I don't know, maybe not, but that's where my imagination goes. Oh, cool. Snap. Look at that. Look at that. So here's the gears, the little paper gears. Oh, that is a snap. <laughs> that literally is a snap. But I love how she took that, that little band and, and wrapped it over the edge because it's paper. That is very cool. Come on. Come on. That is just that little... Mm, my gosh, that's really cool to me. I think that's, that's amazing. Fancy little details all the way around, but going really from, from like this and this just going back and forth. That's what it's all about. It's about using stuff and saying, Oh, you know what? I'm going to go this way. I think that that's what it's always, always inspiring of the maker just to kind of do what they want to do. Then we have, I'm going to bring these in. Vicky did these. These are, well, I was just impressed by this before I even opened them because I, so Vicky, certainly not to downplay the brilliance. Cause I, I even messaged him like, these are brilliant. And the reason I was so surprised is I just thought this was the make and I was perfectly happy with it. Cause I'm like, these are really clever just because using wood grain cardstock on this matchbox die created little wooden boxes and how she inlaid the numbers. So that's like taking the, the window die, if you will, cut it out, taking the numbers, cut it out and then putting it all back in there. So she just created these little, I just call them like wood inlay boxes. And I thought that's what it was. And I was pretty happy until I opened them. So these are done with wood grain cardstock. So Distress Wood Grain Cardstock comes with that really delicate wood grain. If you try to do this with a 3D, it's gonna be way too, too chunky. So this to me was really important that you had uh, something really, really fine and thin. But each one, she did a collage inside. Stop it right now. Come on. Come on. I mean, seriously, look at that. The gears, the little film strip, the little pointy finger. And so each one is its own little pocket collage or pocket assemblage. And you can display it like that. I just, come on. That's so good. So, so good. Each one, each one has that as well. Just gonna, I don't know which, which way it's supposed to open, but I'm just going for it. So See how she even just took part of that picture wheel. You don't even, I mean, it's just the fact that she used like a little bit of something big, right? So just that, just that little picture wheel with the number two to highlight the number two. And then the little gears in the background, just done with metallics and that pointy finger. Cause I told you she's a fan of the pointy finger, but you see what I mean? The boxes were cool, but then the inside I'm like, what? And I love that. I'm so inspired to make some of these just little trinkety boxes where I'm just doing little little collages in there where they're just like little hidden pieces of art. But I also love that you could display it. So you could display it like that, or depending on 
how you did this, you know, you could even stand that up. I mean, you can't really see it, but you get the idea that they would actually stand up like that from little pieces of art because the box holds the box. Does that make sense? Absolutely freaking cool. And I was just happy with that. So impressive, impressive ideas. Who would have thunk just from a box and changing, of course, your paper, your substrate. That to me is, is what really matters. All right. So speaking of ideas, are you ready for this? If you would have told me that someone's going to make a cake out of matchboxes, I would say no. But if someone would, it would be Debbie Adams because I work with Debbie at Sizzix and she just, she thinks shapes totally different. So this is a wooden spool that she painted. She used the doily, well, as it should be, under a cake, a doily. Then she took three matchboxes, ink them just to make a layered cake. The top one, and this, she just said, is a little party box. So she did the little roses. It's got a little banner on there. There's a little flourish. You see that little scroll that goes behind? But I love how she kind of, they almost look airbrushed, you know, kind of like the, the buttercream frosting roses, not to make anyone hungry for cake, but you get the idea. And then use, so these are like, I did, uh, you know, a lot of abstract dyes and little scribble dyes. So you could take that, or you could just do a pen or anything, but each box has something else. So the top one I'll show has confetti. You can see it in there. I don't want to take it out and make a mess. I'll open the other two. So there's confetti in the top. Then this drawer, middle drawer, birthday candles. So it's like a little birthday box. Just, you know, maybe, maybe you have a, a, a crumble cookie delivered or a cupcake. Ooh, crumble cookie. And then the bottom is your own little, I'll take this out, is your own little party banner. Are you ready? Oh my gosh. Seriously? Look at that. I'll hold it up just so you can see. So just using that same alphabet from uh, the travel and of course the butterflies. So now you've got this little, your little party banner, you've got your birthday candles, you've got your own confetti and it's just a party in a box. And of course the idea, you could fill these with with whatever you wanted. I just don't want, I already dumped confetti everywhere when I was setting up because I needed to, I thought it was candy, to be honest, but isn't that just clever? Such a clever make. I think that this is really, really smart for, you know, sending someone a little, little birthday gift. It's cute, easy to make with, with Matchbox. It is fun. I love the idea of, of that. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, everyone's like, now we need cake. All right. And then to wrap it up with the makes, we're going to show uh, Luisa's make. This, like, wow. Only because it's very, it's so her, right? Luisa's just like, okay. But also utilizing leftover product, right? When you, when you empty your spray stain, that becomes a bottle. When you, when you empty your reinker and empty a glaze. But take a look at this mixed media art box that she made, not only with uh, that picture wheel, but also how she transformed these little match boxes into paint palettes, even down to a little paintbrush. But there's so much going on. Like there's so many things where it's like, okay, I see uh, the deco frame where she's got uh, that great photomatic in there and just kind of that grungy drip going down. And then she's got some roses that are kind of all grunged up, but also incorporating some stamps that go behind the film negative, the film strip. She's got the wheel that's like a color. She used a pointy finger, almost like a spinner. And then all these little art boxes with all the colors, but if you take a look at the background, that background are all individual tiles. So all those little tile dies that I talked about from this die, it's just cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and then going in and doing a mosaic in an ideology vignette tray. Wow. And so those could be those. It could be all these negative pieces. Probably a lot of them are these negative pieces from from that border, I just noticed this wonderful border all the way around. Maybe that's where she got really the majority of those tiles are just cut out of that, those leftover pieces. Maybe she didn't even have to use these. Maybe it was all just knowing her, she, she really does like just take what she has and she makes the best of it. But yeah, that's a great kind of two for one. You're already inking and you've got this great trim and now you have tiles. And I just love the little, I love the little watercolor details and how looks like the little butterflies are flying out like from the color, like they just, they just dipped themselves in that color and just flew out of the box. Isn't that beautiful? So what a cool mixed media make, again, for using matchboxes in the work. That's why we wanted that matchbox die so bad because it, it doesn't seem like it's much, but it's such a great 
impactful piece to work with. That to me is, is my favorite thing about this die because you can use it in so many different ways. You can use it obviously as, as art in of itself. It can also hold a lot of different uh, photo moments, photo memories. It can be its own little art piece like Vicky did, just using those little shadow boxes, or you can literally make something like a little cake. It could be a, a birthday cake. I got to put that little party down. That's so cute. Isn't that cute? Oh, Mario, will you grab me that little jewelry box too that Debbie did? Because sure. I think that's, because yeah. that, that's also a little matchbox. Look at that little party. Isn't that fun? Oh, so cute. We got that. Thanks. You go. Thanks, Mario. There you go. Look at that. Just clever ideas with a, a matchbox die that you think, okay, what would I ever do with that? Well, if you're into anything dimensional, I think that's, that's something that's super, super important. Super, super important. All right. Beautiful makes. Thanks, makers. You guys did an amazing job, as always, to just really think think beyond the scope of everything and, and create amazing works of art. All right. So I'm going to do a quick little demo. You guys want to stick around for that. It's not going to be wazoo. It's just going to be like, hey, here's how you do it. And there we go. Make sure I'm kind of framed in. We're good, Mario? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. You can do that. Okay. So I just want to talk real quick about how we can, how we can create some things. I'll talk about the matchbox first, actually, just because... Well, I'll do that and then we'll do the, we'll do the rows. Okay. So I'll tell you just kind of where my brain is when it comes to developing certain dies. And sometimes, especially if something's dimensional. Now I'm going to, what I show you is not the only way to do it. I'm just going to preface that is not the only way. It's just the way I did it. Okay. But when it comes to working with shapes, let me take my actual dies and I want to open the packages. There we go. Okay, I'm ready. Not too bad of a transition. Great. Um, sometimes I like to, to make sure that something is for convenience. And when it comes to convenience, I really factor in how I'm going to make something, how often I want to make it, what will I need when, when it comes to making it. And so the matchbox, because as you saw, especially when it comes to maybe using it for ideology or anything like that, you often want to create a, a lot of pieces and you want to do some some pretty simple work. So when it comes to some simple work, if I can make something work in the sidekick, I'll make it work in the sidekick. Uh, doesn't mean every die works in the sidekick, but sometimes that is something I consider when I'm actually uh, figuring out a scale or size. So in the case of this one, I knew that if I was going to cut out these little window frames uh, in there, I wanted to be able to kind of I don't know, adjust it a little bit easier. And so I find that the sidekick works. It doesn't mean you have to use this. Use whatever die cut machine you would normally use uh, for cutting. But sometimes you look at a die and you won't even think of this because it's not this tiny little shape, okay? So for this particular die, you always wanna make sure that your cardstock is going to fit the width of your plates. Now your sidekick comes with these two plates and you can see I've, I'm on the same set for I don't even know how many years. These are totally robust. I also came out with extended ones, maybe maybe a year, maybe two, and that's for longer dies. For this one, you need the extended ones if you're gonna use the sidekick, and here's why. Because if you take the band, just wanna point this out, and you place it on a piece of cardstock that's gonna fit, and you take your standard ones, and you're like, well, hello, Captain Obvious, it fits, it totally fits. The thing is, because it fits right to the very end, right to that bevel, your sidekick is not going to want to take it. The rollers will not take your sandwich. And if you force it in, you would break your machine. Anytime you put a sandwich in a machine, you always need you like a little, a little head start because those beveled plates actually are grabbed like this by the roller, which is kind of the narrow end. And then the pressure is, is forced through. So if you're going to do this and you want to use your sidekick, I just want to remind you that you're going to need that extended one. Same thing like you can tell how many rosettes we've cut. <laughs> Pretty much left these marks because the bolt rosettes also fit, but it needs to be the extended one, right? So you just place that down. That's pretty, pretty easy. I've already cut it, but I just wanted to talk about that first. I didn't want to just say, oh, use your sidekick and then you try it and then uh, nobody's having good luck uh, cutting it. And you're going to hear snap, crackles, snappity snap, usually on a straight cut. There you go. But 
pretty simple because the sidekick actually has enough pressure to cut and give you these little deboss lines. They're faint, so beware of that. That's kind of the trade-off. If you were to run this through, say, a uh, fold away or, or your Vagabond or your Switch, you would get more pressure than you do here, but it is still enough to fold. Uh, you can also do a second pass if you want. That also helps uh, create those, those crease rules a little bit. Um, same thing on, on the box here. I'll show you when I talk about the second pass and maybe we'll compare the difference. This one, it doesn't really matter, but because I would already have these out, I would end up using them. But let's just cut the base. So if I know that I wanna score something, I'm gonna just do a second pass, like right after you hear like that, that second snap. Because what you'll see is your crease rules are see more defined. It's the, the blade is no different in this than that, but see a double pass will help with that. So these are just little tips when it comes to, to cutting out things using your sidekick. If you were gonna do that little window, just to talk about that, I would have placed this down, let's kind of recreate that. If you were gonna use the windows, could you do these separate? Like, could I now put this in and run it through? Absolutely. If you weren't sure and you're like later going, oh, okay, I wanna do this. It doesn't really matter which one of these sides you put it in because it's gonna be a full wrap. It's the same on either side. But if you already knew in advance, pretend this was a full sheet of paper with me now and you put your die there, you would then actually put in your shape however you want it inside and then you could do it in one pass. Always have options. It's completely up to you as the maker how you want to do it. Sometimes, you know, you just want to have a bunch of box blanks and then customize them later. That's totally fine. Okay, so building the box. Let's talk about that real quick. Building the box is pretty easy. Everybody is going to have a different way, a different suggestion, a different idea. You do you. You do what works for you, what you're comfortable doing, uh, what mediums you like to work with. Uh, I prefer to work with a liquid glue when it comes to building this box. It gives me a little bit more forgiveness and play than uh, tape does, and it gives me much flatter folds than hot glue. I wouldn't recommend hot glue for this just because it's going to make uh, all of your folds chunkier and it's going to make a tight fit in the matchbox. Okay, so the reason I like collage medium is because it dries matte, but if you have any other type of matte drying adhesive, good. Uh, I wouldn't recommend glossy accents because it's going to be shiny. So let me just take a set of these. Here's what, here's what we have. And we need to fold them. And I talk about having some, some type of acrylic. These are my grid blocks. They're, they're nice and thin and they have a really, uh, I'll just say a sharp corner, not sharp to cut you, but sharp corner. And that's what I use when it comes to folding, but you can use a ruler, you can use whatever. But essentially what I do is I just pick it up. I place my kind of crease edge where it just runs uh, right along that edge. And then I just use the block just to kind of push against. That just helps. And then I'll just, turn it and push and turn again. I'm trying to do this through the phone. Oh, not bad. And push and then do this and push. So for me, because I want the boxes to be, well, as close to say the ideology material, I'm using Distress Craft Heavy Stock for mine. You can use any paper. You can use backdrops. You can use whatever you want to use. But this one is 130 pound. So it's it's really thick, so it feels more like a, a chipboard type box. It's not chipboard, but it feels like it and it allows me to cut and score. But again, you use whatever it is that you wanna use. On these little tabs, they're small enough that you can just fold by hand. You can certainly use the block if you want, but really that little edge, because it comes right off the edge, you can just do that. All right, so once I've used the block, and I'll do the same on here, because I, when I have the block in hand, I just kind of pick up all the stuff. So I'm just following that little score line, bring it up, pushing, Follow it up, push, and then you can flip this around because it's just easier to have most of the paper below you. There, I've just pushed all those things. Then you're going to take some type of crease tool, any kind of paper creaser. I like this Teflon one the best versus uh, a plastic one. A plastic one sometimes leaves a shine on your paper because you're rubbing plastic and just these are just really nice. I mean, they're a little bit more expensive, but once you have it, you'll have it for life. So. That's really important. So these I'm just gonna fold down and then I'll take this, open it up. All I'm doing is just making sure that my folds at this point are a little bit crunchier, cleaner, crisp, whatever word you feel comfortable using in, for your folds. But you want to make sure that you have some nice clean folds when it comes to building. That's all you need to do. Okay, so we have our, our pieces ready to go. 
Next, I need things to hold things. So this is what I use. Again, you use whatever you want, but I like to use ideology clips. So this is, this is a hinge clip, but this is a big one. Hinge clips came in two sizes. It's a big hinge clip, but you can use anything. You can use a chip clip, clothespin, whatever you want. And then these are tiny clips. These are ideology. This is an embellishment, but it's actually a functional clip. See? And so for little boxes, ooh, they're they perfect. Work perfect. They work perfect. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start with my collage medium. We're gonna do this box. So the box, I'll just show you, is pretty simple. Okay, that's how it starts. These tabs go in, these tabs go in, and they're glued. So your tabs live on the inside of the box. That is important because if you're going to slide this in and out of this wrap, you don't want the tabs on the outside or they'll, they'll create a little roadblock here. Does that make sense? So notice the tabs are on the inside of the box. So that's really important. On the outside, when you try to push this in, it's gonna get caught every time. It needs to be on the inside. I agree, Jen, cute and functional. Okay, so your liquid glue, because it's collage medium, I know that collage medium is going to dry completely matte. So I wanna put some down. I'm not icing a cake, but I wanna at least see the glue. And I like to work on one side at a time. This is again, just how I do it. Then I'm just gonna give that a couple thunks to get the glue out of the top and just set the cap on there to try to keep it from, from drying up. And here's what I'm going to do. I can't work from the inside of the box for whatever reason. So now I just place that down and I flip it over. And I flip it over because it allows me, I don't know why, maybe everybody works this way, but it allows me to kind of see my corners better and hold it this way. It's just more comfortable, okay? Any of that excess glue, you can just wipe it off and roll it in your fingers. Your fingers shouldn't get sticky as long as you do that. And you're gonna hold it because I wanna make sure that my corners are pretty straight. You're gonna hold it for, I don't know, a few seconds, but I'm telling you this with love. I'm telling you this from someone who's taught classes for 20 years. Glue needs to dry. We learned this in grade school. It takes the time to dry. And I say that, and I don't say that to be condescending. I'd say that because as a maker, I am probably one of the most impatient makers you'll ever meet. But I know for glue that if you just, that's where you like all your patients that maybe you stored it for the month, use it when you're gluing because it is what's going to save you time because just giving it that little extra time, now it doesn't mean it's totally dry yet. If you, if you pulled these apart, it would pop away, but it's enough that it sticks. So now I can use that little tiny clip and I'm gonna clip that together right in the corner. But if you, if you squeeze it and let it go and squeeze it and let it go and squeeze it and let it go, besides that it won't ever grab, now you've got glue everywhere and now it's taking you actually twice as long to dry. That, that's really the truth. So. It's just my advice and it's something that I struggle with. I still struggle with it. I do every single time I make because I'm like dry, I don't have time. So that's why I'm always looking for little clips or little, little shortcuts, if you will. Okay, so I've got my glue. I, do, I like to do both. Flip it over so I can work from the outside. This, this way I can see that corner because if your corners aren't lined up, then your drawers are a little wonky. We'll be okay. And then you see how I squeeze and I get that little glue to come out. I'm trying to get as close without blurring. I'll just quickly take my finger, grab the other side again, quickly take my finger, roll it, you know. This is where you really want art clothes because I'd probably spread that glue across my shirt or some people wear aprons, whatever. But you, the squeezing is important because you need to get rid of all the excess glue. You don't need that excess glue in there and you wanna make a bond that's not, uh, doesn't have a lot of air. So that's also dry enough for me to get the clips on. So I'll take the tiny clips so all I'm doing is just squeezing, going right into that and letting go. They're strong. They really do work well. But see, I can't imagine anything else. I mean, yeah, if you had clothespins or paper clips, that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty tough. But see, like there, see how I put that down and it created a little bit of ooze? Just wipe it off, you'll never know. Okay, that's gonna dry. And now we'll talk about the wrap. So believe it or not, when you see the wrap, take a look at that. One side is shorter than the other. Okay, do you see that? And that's to ensure that it actually comes uh, to a box. If this paper was just as long, it actually hits this edge and it pops off. So we wanted to make it visibly uh, distinguishable for you as a maker so you knew that you'd make a square box. If you do it this way, you're gonna actually get uh, a, a short edge on the outside. So remember the short goes on the inside of the box, just like the tabs go on the inside of the box. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna add our collage medium 
Now, again, some people would be like, I would use tape at this point. Okay, that's fine. You go for it. You do you. But I'm just going to put some of that on there. Again, a couple of thunks. Place this down. And then I'm going to just line this up. And same thing. We want to line up that edge to the edge of the box and just wipe off the glue. It won't leave a shine. But this one's a little weird to kind of hold on. So here are some, some tips, I guess, if you will. If you have skinny enough fingers that, like I think my pinky might be, well, barely skinny enough. If you have skinny enough fingers to, to put through the box, go for it. If you don't and you have a, something flat, like maybe like this paper creaser, you can use that. See, I'm pushing down on the inside. I'm just kind of doing the same thing with my fingers, but this is going all the way across. And I'm doing that the same way I would hold those, those corners, just enough for it to dry for a bit. And then if you're happy with this, you could leave it, but you can also just take the box at this point and fold it whichever way. I tend to take it to where my edge is going inside. And that's where I use this clip and I'll put it right up along that edge. So it's still puffy there. We wanna leave that puffy, don't, don't crease that but that's just going to allow that seam to be really secure. And you leave that there. How long does this take to dry? Well, this is already dry. I mean, collage medium doesn't take long to dry. It just takes time to set up. But I would, if I was making these, that's why I have extra clips. Like I make some, I make another one, and then I'll take clips from that. And well, you get the idea. But, but that's really uh, a great tip of, of making this box. And this box, you know, it's supposed to be a tight fit. I don't know if my outside's dry or not, but for live, it's going to be dry enough. It's going to be a tight fit. So what I suggest is finding the end that it goes. I was talking to Vicky about this too. She's like, man, when, when you make these, like it's a friction fit. And I go, yeah, but once you get it in there, there we go. Come on, come on, Holtz. There we go. Once you get that in there, you're set because that really, again, is by design. You want, I want that. And it will, you know, as the paper goes through a little bit, it'll, it'll loosen it a little bit. That's fine. But this is what we want. We want it to be an, an opened thing. Okay. Here's another little tip or trick. If you're creating these boxes and maybe you have a, a, one of these window boxes, you can leave the window open. It doesn't always have to be a shakety shake, especially if you're going to do a little vignette or something inside. Okay. That's going to be, that's going to be great. But let's say you wanted to make a little shakety shake and you wanted to do acetate. Now you could go in and you can take a ruler and you can measure and you can do all of that. But this die that I talked about, that is the label die, you know, the label that goes over the top. It's also the window die. So this is going to cut a window that fits inside the box as well. Like I said, you can measure and you can cut, but I told you I don't measure or cut if I can avoid it. I'm using shrink plastic. I talk about that. That's my favorite kind of acetate to die cut. Can you hear it? It has that weird sound. I don't, you can try other plastics. You do whatever's gonna work for you. I just find that when I try to cut out plastic packaging with a thin die, it doesn't really like to cut. So that's really why I use shrink plastic. This is, I don't know if Ranger still even sells shrink plastic, but I think it's just gonna be any shrink plastic. I'm not shrinking it. I'm just using the plastic as my acetate. Does that make sense? You're going to hear it in a second. I'm going to take the die. I'm going to place it down onto the shrink plastic blade down, place it in there. And notice I didn't place it right to the edge because I need that little head start. You could place it in the middle if you want. You're going to hear this one's also really snappy. That's good. You want that snappy because that means it's actually holding. And this is going to die cut that little window. And this window, I'll show you actually fits right inside there. So it's the perfect acetate. So if you were going to make one of these boxes, you would, let's see, let's take one that I already cut. We'll go back and, you know, do the remember if. So let's just take one that's already cut out. I've already explained how you would or could cut out a window simultaneously, but I'm going to do this. Let's cut this one. Oh, that's going to work. That looks good just so you can see like when you're, when you're adding it, you'll find your groove. There you go. Okay. So this, this is when, after I did all of my folds, 
because that's what's going to make it easy to know where your acetate's going to go. So here, see, I'm just using that. So you're not going to fold here because you'd create a crease. Just doing that against your block. Just going to take this just so you get the idea. All right. So that little shrink window that I put somewhere, <laughs> what did I just do with it? I see, I was, I was too busy reading the comments when people talk about shaking and skipping and... Yeah, and they just need to refresh their browser. Oh, okay. Really, yeah, just to just get a little distraction. There you go. All right, so if you have this little window, you would put the window in before you did the wrap. And so what I use for that is I just use a little bit of tape. Could you use glue? Yes, you could still use collage medium, but of course with liquid glue, you risk it going in. So all I do is just take a little bit of score tape, like a little eighth inch I think is gonna be fine, and just place it on the edges. I only do two edges. It just depends on what you plan on putting in the box. If you think it's gonna get out, then you, know, you might wanna seal it a little bit better. But this, I'm just going to take that tape I don't have my craft pick, but that's all right. Hey, this is gonna work. Oh, look, Mario was already on it. I'm like, nope, I'm doing everything I can and not ask. Okay, so this just, it fits. See, it just fits right in that channel where you just place it down. You don't even have to measure. You don't even have to cut. You're just done. Oh, I wanna make sure that that is out of the way. That looks a little wide. I went a little close, that's all right. Zippity-doo, you got your window. So. That's just a, another thing to remember is that this particular die, although it cuts the label for the top, not the frame, there's a smaller rectangle for that. That's for the window. It's a label, but it's also really for the window. So you didn't have to measure like, how big of a piece of acetate do I need? You can just cut them out, right? Super simple. So that's the matchbox. I think it, it is really, it's just easy, easy to do just have to you know know what to expect yes you're going for a friction fit yes you need things to dry before you start building but i mean it's fun and this could be any paper if you didn't want to do it out of this fine but my suggestion is if you're going to cover something i wouldn't recommend covering the box after you cut it because it won't fit inside so like if you wanted this out of a different paper use just that different paper but the outside is what you could wrap with anything else. It's just a, a fun die and really, I think the suggestion of the tiny clips and the little tricks of cutting out windows, that's what I wanted to share on the matchbox. All right, get on to the rows. It'll take me just a second to clean up. Did I miss anything? Were there any questions on the matchbox, Mario? Not that I saw. You covered it all. Well, I try. Get okay. No, no, I'll probably need it back. You know me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's how it is. Okay. Moving on to the rows. So with the rows, I will also preface that I just do, I've probably done this rows different almost every time I demo it. Because as any maker, when you discover a different way to do it, just celebrate that. Don't apologize for it. I hear so many people go, oh, I'm so sorry I don't do it like that anymore. I'm like, who cares? If you learn something new, you're like, hey, let me just show you this new way. I know just last week I told you to do it this way, but I came up with a new way. Never apologize for your creativity evolving. Celebrate it, because that just means you're always forward thinking, and I love that. So this particular one, the die that makes the rose, it's this little swirly die, okay? These little two dies, those are the leaves. So we're just gonna focus on the rose you can make the roses out of anything really, but the thinner the paper, the easier it is. So here's just a bunch of roses that um, I made all using ideology backdrops. I like ideology backdrop weight. Um, it's a hundred pound cardstock, but it's not a super thick, heavy, like it's not watercolor paper, mixed media. It's just, it's a really great weight where it is thicker than, but traditional scrapbook paper would work totally fine. But the thicker you go, the more challenging this is going to be. And so I, just take a moment I find this works. That plate of roses. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, Look at that. it's fun. We had a good time. I'm like, hey, Mario, can you, can you help me? I just need you to cut these real quick. So he cut them all and he's like, what are you doing? And like, I was literally making roses like in real time to him cutting. He's like, how fast are you making these? I'm like, you just make them. You don't think about it. Thinking is overrated. That will totally, that's why I wanted to do this because people are going to struggle and they, and when I watch some YouTube videos, I'm not, listen, I'm not trying to diss anyone, 
but sometimes people just give the wrong advice. They overcomplicate things. I don't know if it's because they don't know or just because they don't want to just try another way to do it. So like I said, not the only way, but certainly a very quick way. All right. So when you're making the roses, find your paper. It will work in the sidekick, but you can use whatever you want to do. Okay. I, again, always cut my paper to fit my plate. So when I'm prepping paper, like some, some days I have just leftover paper, I always cut it at two and a half because I know that's going to fit my sidekick plate. It's just easier because I already have paper at the ready when I need it. Does that make sense? And depending on the detail, like if you want little handwriting or whatever, this is what I like about using pattern paper. And I have to thank Paula for always talking me into uh, these ditzy prints, she calls them, these tiny little prints. These actually made really great flowers because it added the color. I didn't do anything to these. It added the color and like a little, a little print. I thought that was neat. So I like that. We'll, we'll cut a couple of them, but it could be really dictionary paper, map, whatever. Okay. So just going to place that, place it down right over that. Run this through. Excellent. Now the dismount, when you take this die out, it's going to want to grab on to the paper. It just always does. So you can just pull this out and then it's going to start grabbing your die in the center. It just does this every time. Okay. Don't continue to pull because then you could actually rip your shape. So this is where you, you now grab your shape and you finish taking it out of the die. It's a weird, I mean, Mario can attest to that. It's a weird dismount and he goes, oh, are these connected? I'm like, no, it's just when it gets in the middle, it wants to grab. So this is what we need. That is your leftover and you can deal with that or not. And I am the or not group just because that would, that would drive me crazy. Okay. Let's do, let's do a word one. Oh, crackle was fun. I did a crackle rose. That's kind of pretty. I think that's this one. Look at that with the crackle. Isn't that pretty? It's kind of bluish crackle. You go through your ideology backdrops for this. This is where the, it's super, super fun. Okay. Place that down. Doesn't really matter where your paper is. Just always try to keep your die more in the center ish if you can. And we're going to run this through. You don't really hear snap crackles on these because most of the time when you hear cracks on your cutting pads, it's because you have a straight edge on whatever you're cutting out. That's pretty much what causes it. So again, springy dismount till you get to the middle. Then you grab this and you remove it. And then you just take the two and you separate it in the middle. You're going to think it didn't cut, but it does. It's just, it's super catchy. And then bye. Bye bye. Okay. So far, so good. You guys understand the cutting part? Here we go. So once we have the cutting, you could just make your flower. At this point, you can just make the flower. Do not be bothered by, by anything else. But there are some things that we can use to actually make working with it a little easier. I'm going to take out the sidekick now. I just released the suction cup. If you're going to use your sidekick for a while, uh, miss the bottom of this. See how it likes to pick up dust? Just miss the bottom with water before you use the suction cup, and it will stay on pretty much the whole day without having to redo it. All right? So what I'm going to use, I'll just talk about it. This is an optional step, but you'll see why I use it, is I'm going to use my shaping kit. Most of the time people associate the shaping kit for these uh, very elaborate sculpting things with paper. But this to me is the best tool for roses because not only do we have this stylus, but we have these squeezers. It's like a reverse tweezer, but I call them a squeezer because you have to use them to use a tweezer. So I'm just going to take that stuff out. So first I'm going to use the mat. So this is the mat that comes with the shaping kit. It's just like a big old thick piece of foam, uh, not to be confused with the mat that you would use for your dye brush. Okay. Then I'm going to take squeezers and always save that little cap. It, it comes with the cap. So be sure you save it because it's very, very sharp and pointy. And then we're going to take this one, it comes with two different stylus tools. One is big and one is small. We're going to work with the small one. Now that's really all I need. So I would just want to talk quickly about this quilling tool. As I mentioned, the original die set came with the quilling tool. You can use a quilling tool if you want. Um, I don't anymore. I did. That's why I designed it. I thought that was the easiest way. Since then, I found that this is so much easier to use than the quilling tool. So I just wanted to talk about why I'm doing that. Okay. Then the other thing that we need 
is a glue gun, much like the rosettes, a glue gun. I just have my glue gun. Oh, it's hanging out. Look, I always have sort of stuff. Um, the first thing I always do with a glue gun is I rip off that little kickstand because it drives me crazy. And if you have one of these, it's from Simon Says, it's like a little silicone nuggety paw thing, a little bumpity bit. That's where my glue gun goes because it keeps it from flying on the ground and it just makes it handy and doesn't hurt the table. That's where it is. It's over there off to the side. Okay, so here's what we need to do. And I'm going to try to, I think I might even zoom in a little bit. So let me just try. There we go. That's it. Okay. And I'll move this just so you can see what I, because I want you to see the visual of this. Okay, perfect. You guys can see, you may not be able to hear, but you can see. Okay, so here's what I'm going to use uh, this tool for. This is what's going to give the flower a little bit of shape because the roses, as you can see, the petals kind of bend outward. See, when you, when you curl up that rose, you want those petals to have a little bit of bend. And I find this so much easier to do from the beginning. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your flower, whatever it is, I'll do the pink one first, and you're going to flip it over. Okay, so if this is the front that I want, you're gonna flip it over and we're gonna go from the back. And you're gonna take that, the largest ball on the smallest tool, and all you're going to do is really just kind of push in along the straight edge of this. So where each petal is, and see what it's doing to the paper already? It's relaxing the paper. The paper doesn't really have a memory, but what it's doing is it's like taking that flat petal, and when I push it, it's like curling it up like that. So that's what's making this paper curl. And it goes really quick. You don't, it's not a lot of pressure. You just kind of touch that, I'll try to show you, this bottom straight edge of the petal. That's where I'm like going in and just doing a quick little circle. There, I missed that one. Quick little circle. And you have to fight with it. It wants to get in your, wants to always get right in your way, in the vision. But I'm gonna go all the way to the middle, but I don't do these two pieces. You can, but you don't really need to, because that, like you can go right to the middle and that's it. That's really what you create. It should look like this really hot mess of a, a corkscrew. Let's do that again. So I want this here, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna push, 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 push. You'll see it just goes really quick. And you wanna push each one. You don't wanna draw a line because that's gonna make a different design. But it's again along the straight edge, which is causing that particular petal to curl backwards, which is what we want done with the rose. It's also gonna make it easier to, to roll because we've taken that rigid paper and using this shaping tool, we're relaxing that paper. So there you go, you've made, oh, <laughs> you've made that corkscrew, okay, with both of them. That's it for that. Next, we're gonna take our tweezers, squeezers. our squeezers, because <laughs> we have to squeeze them, but they're really good because they're super pointy and super strong. So now what we wanna do is now we're gonna go back to the front of it, go to our pretty paper and see how it's, it's kind of going in an opposite direction of what you want. Once you do a couple of these, I swear you just, it's gonna be mindless, just like the rosette. We're gonna start from the smallest and go to the biggest because for a rose, your petals are small and then they get bigger. So remember that. So we're starting from that small. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the end of that with my squeezers, see, just that first little petal and I'm just gonna roll. And when I'm rolling, I'm just rolling, I'm not, adjusting tension. I don't want to pull this super tight. You just do, let it do its thing. If it gets boxy, you can give it a, a little pinch, but this should be very, very loose, really. Don't make it tight. Just let it kind of go all the way around the tweezers. It's going to be a hot mess. It doesn't matter. When you get to the end, you're ready for the dismount. You simply squeeze and then take out the squeezers. It'll just kind of like let it go on the inside. And this is what you have. It's pretty much almost a rose. Okay, so now for gluing, it's really, really simple. Okay, what we're going to take is some hot glue. We're gonna do, as you can see in the screen, I'm gonna do a touch of glue. I'm going to push that pedal down into the glue and I'm gonna use the tip of the glue gun to push it down. Then I'm gonna squeeze a blob of glue. I need to get my little pad over here. This is where I use it. See that my glue gun stays. Then I'm just gonna take my flower and tip it right into that pile of glue. And now I'll take my squeezer. I'm gonna grab the center again, give it a little twist. And as it's in there, I'm using my fingers. I hope, see, you can't really see. Let me get, whoop, let me get the squeezers out of the way. I knew that my head was gonna be an issue because I have to get my face down there. But what I'm doing is I'm like pushing this out. 
right? I'm, I'm pushing the pedals out as I'm pushing in the center. Now, if you find whatever reason that when you're doing this, I'll zoom in a little closer, we'll see how that goes. If you find that when you're doing this, let's just say I'm doing this, I'll be aggressive. And something, there you go, something kind of comes out. You can always put more glue inside. That's why you want your glue gun there. And just push that back in. My squeezers grab the center a little too much of this. But I'm gonna tighten it up. Because see, you can just kind of tighten up the flower into that glue, but I need to hold the glue while I use the squeezers for the dismount. Okay, let it sit for a second. And there's your rose. It's really that simple. And these outer ones is where you can go in with your finger and kind of get that glue, move that out of the way, okay? And every, every rose is gonna have like this organicness to it. We'll ink it in a second. But let's do this one again. I'm gonna move this off to the side. I'm trying to stay in frame. There we go. I'll try to zoom in even more, so brace yourself. Woo. All right. I have a little coin dozer going on the side of my table. I just want you guys to see that little twist. How's that? Ah, there we go. Okay. So glue gun squeezer. This is really scary to see how close it is. Okay. Well, you, need my glasses. well you know, there's that. So there again, I'm going to start with the outside, grab my squeezers, start rolling. And here, like, see where it went flat? Like, you can always just squeeze that. That's not a problem. But then just let it roll. And I just roll it right across my fingers. If I find that, see like that, if I find that it's going straight, I just push it with my thumb. It's never, it's never a tight roll. And I think that's, that's where I always struggled maybe with the quilling tool is I was always making the roses so crazy tight. And this is just giving it a little bit of direction. That's it. See, I didn't even go all the way. But then I just want to like let let that go so I can get these out. You just kind of squeeze and pull them out. So pretty much we're there. We are already there. So again, we're going to do glue, touch. So now the base is attached to a craft sheet. This is a nonstick sheet. And then a blob of glue, because just like the rosette, I want that glue to kind of go up inside the rose, if you will. So that's why I kind of move this around and just push that stuff in there, like push with your finger. Don't worry about the shape of your petals yet. You want the center of your rose to get into that glue. And while you're holding it, that's why I was trying to get out of my own way. You can't really, with my pork chop fingers. Um, you hold and push these petals out. The petals already have that curl that you started with. So that's, and paper again, doesn't have a memory. So you can push those out. So when I talked about that other make that, that Zoe did, if you want the rose to come out a little bit, just don't push down really hard in the center. But that glue is what holds everything together. And then you have a rose. And this, again, you can, you can roll this up. If you want this outer edge, let's say you want this rose to have, say, petals a little closer, no problem. Then where it's flat right there, just put a little hot glue and then bring that up closer to the rose. So you can still go in and, and adjust this or modify it when it's done. But the beauty of these is that when you start putting them together, you just create these great organic roses. It's that, it's just that simple. So for inking, I like to just use, let's see, where is it? Here we go. Thanks, Mario. I just use a little tiny ink tool, but you can use a brush, you can use whatever you want. And here I just kind of dab over the top because what I want to do is see that little white edge of the paper. That's what I want to get a, a little darker. I use frayed burlap. I use frayed burlap for every single one of the roses, but you can use whatever color you want. But see how it just gave it that perfect little shadow. So again, taking a tiny blending tool and you just dab it on there. It's just that simple. But I think gluing that thing down, it just, it keeps it in place. So that's, if people are like, why did you glue it first? Because that little bit of glue and sticking that, I'll just call it the little landing pad down, allowed me to put a blob of glue and then form my flower without trying to hold it all in my hand. That's where I think uh, I struggled when I was making flowers. I was trying to do it all in space instead of just using the surface. But you can create really uh, so many beautiful flowers, simple. And this goes back to compartmental making. This is where you just, you just make them. You sit down one day, but you just make them and some could be big and some could be small and some could be 
uh, tighter and some could be looser just because it doesn't really matter. They're all going to be great when you, you put them together. I think it, it makes it really, really easy. And then one thing I'm just going to, I'll zoom out a little bit. One thing to keep in mind is that they also make really great pine cones. So this is the same die, but instead of, uh, doing the rows and pushing it in, this is done with a toothpick, which I'll talk about probably around the holiday season. I'll demo this die again and just show how to make pine cones. It's the same thing, but instead of an any where, you know, we push everything down into the rows, you actually, instead of using a squeezer, you glue a toothpick to that first little tiny pedal. And as you roll, you roll it down the toothpick. So it just jets out, but it makes great pine cones. So something to keep in mind, if you want little paper pine cones that you'll have for that die at Christmas time, right? But we'll, we'll get into that demo for Christmas. So there we go. I think we did it. 